Hey, and welcome to the Room Rumble. This is Mark Reed, and welcome, welcome everybody. It's so good to see you, you, you little scamps, you. And welcome to. Yeah, I, I realize. And and Daryl Frost, thank you so much. Keeps me honest. Basically, goes well. That question's been answered. Yes, it's. Is the eclipse the end? And I was kind of in my mind, I was thinking, is it the beginning of the end? Some people claimed that, you know, it was the beginning of the end. It was a sign from above. Ooh. And so today we're going to be discussing that. And, and just the eclipse in general. If you saw the eclipse, if you um, had any feelings about it, if you wanted to talk about it or anything to do with it, sure, come on board and um, come and come and tell me all about it. First off, I'll just grab the link quickly, but I want to, I want to give a big shout out. Thanks, Daryl. I, I realize that it's sort of a the, the question has been answered. No, the the uh, eclipse wasn't the end. Um, but um, if you're wondering, if you're here for the first time, wondering what this is all about, um, I generally go into other people's rooms. I I bother them over talking about atheism, philosophy, all these subjects, um, science, things like that. So um, this started as a reverse room rumble. Basically, you get to uh, come and hassle me. And it's interesting. Um, there are a lot of people that sort of said I floated the idea. It was actually given to me uh, by one of the guys at Proverbs Guy who sort of said, hey, if you do a room, we'll, you know, we'll come solo and show you how easy it is what you're doing. But apparently it's not so easy because I haven't seen hide nor hair of them they have not dropped in, unfortunately. So apparently it's not as easy as first suspected, which which I kind of knew already. But hey, there you go. Um, yeah, and and I, I sort of give priority to to people who I've I've sort of gone into before and had discussions with that I really like. And I I, I realize that I'm just saying, hey, it's a room rumble, it's this big fight. It, it's really not, you know, I'm not that type of debate bro kind of thing. So I'm not. I'm not there. Oh, Exxon Music, I know you're here to stir up trouble. How, how dare you, sir? How dare you? Um, open room. Link is in there. But I want to go through first and sort of um, um, sort of just go through my thoughts on it and a few things that I've heard and that I've seen on, on the internet about this eclipse and just how sort of what I feel about it. But I really would like to hear from anybody that did see the eclipse and like had a, uh, you know, sort of a an experience, what it was like. I I, I, I think I've seen eclipses before. I, I think I saw a total eclipse at one point. Um, and it was weird. It was a creepy feeling. It was a weird feeling being outside in the day and it's just, you know, completely dark. It's a very odd feeling. Um, so, you know, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, but I'll, I'll put the open room link in here. If you want to join, please do. I, I do give priority to the people whose rooms I have rumbled, as I call it. But, um, you know, anyone's welcome if you want to talk about it. Now, uh, the Eclipse. Oh, and, and just clearing up, I do have um, a couple of new emotes. I am working on them. I'm not doing nothing. Uh, yeah, so I've got the Lin Love one that I put in last time. And I've also got a WTF because I felt like it needed it. I, I felt like it. It, it. it really did need a, 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 a what the what the fuck like seriously. So yeah, uh, you didn't have special glasses. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't don't look into an eclipse without the glasses. Apparently, I think that maybe they made it very um, they made it very clear to people this time round that they did need some kind of eyewear protection if they were going to in fact look at an eclipse. I think it was because in the two thousand and seventeen eclipse. Um, the the president of the United States um, just sort of looked up and stared into the sun and pointed to his wife to do the same without eye protection. So, yeah, it it you know that's that's bad. But I think they may have gone overboard. So there's a lot of people reporting that they may have had eye damage when they're not sure if they have. You know, so uh, yeah, yeah, it's all good. So. The eclipse, and I've got a few pictures to show you. Some of the things that I found, you may have seen them before, you may not have. I, I do want to share them with you, and I do want to share a couple of things that I did find that I found kind of funny because, you know, it's my show, and if I find it funny, I'm, I'm going to put it on. So this is the um, International Space Station, which is great. Um, I don't know if you've seen the footage of this, but this is this is them um, sort of documenting the, the eclipse going over. Look at that. Isn't that incredible? And that's over Canada. So yeah, this is it again. That the shadow of the moon 
on the earth. How cool is that? That is awesome. I love it. Looks incredible. Most useful thing Fox News has done for a while. But um, uh, what else do I also want to show you? I also wanted to share with you. I'll just stop my screen. And sort of so um, there was a lot of talk among certain circles. And by certain circles, I mean evangelical circles about this eclipse being the uh, herald of the end times because of the, the comet that was supposedly uh, the Devil's Horns Comet that was supposedly coming with it, um, which, you know, it was a thing, but it's not a um, thing I, oh, look, excellent music. I, I think I was talking with, um, on, on Matters Now with Ozian, because he was doing a Flat Earth debate soon. Um, so he, he sort of said, um, you know, last time he spoke to Ross, uh, um, you know, that, that Ross, yeah, the, um, what's he called? something outraged, something triggered. I, I don't remember his name. Um, barely conscious. I, 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 don't, I don't remember his name. Um, real offended, maybe? Yeah, real offended, sorry. Real offended, uh, Ross. Um, he said he didn't know what it was that, that passed in front of the moon. He, he did not know. Uh, no, too many clouds. Yeah, so um, your hooligan, your boy, your hooligan is, is up in... Um, um, is up in Canada, um, so the cloud thing, yeah, it, it kind of sucks. You know, that's that's weather for you. I'm I'm so sorry, mate. I I, I yeah, um, but uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And somebody sent me, um, and I want to give a big shout out to uh, Big Bad Mama. Um, so I want to give a shout out to Big Bad Mama. Who is who has sent me a couple of pictures that they snapped, which is cool. Um, have to find them. Okay. Yeah. So this is this is um, apparently this is near the Mississippi. Um, so near the the Mississippi River. I, I, I don't know where that is. But they, um, yeah, they they snapped this picture at the start, and they snapped um, this, which is an awesome shot, like just awesome. Um, so that's from uh, Big Bad Mama. Uh, so thank you, Big Bad Mama, really appreciate it. And so that's that's awesome. Um, and this is uh, actually I'll have to I have to share my audio. So I, I want to um, also give a big shout out to Better Than Ember, our, our wonderful, wonderful lady of the, the uh, debates, uh, Ember. Uh, they, they gave a bit of a thing as well, and I'll just find that somewhere. Somewhere. Where is it? There we go. So I've sped this up to five times, like so it is going at a, a fair whack. But um, this is this is what Ember caught. So uh, yeah, no, I'll, I'll link you in as well, Big Bad Mama. Um, I'll link you in the description. So all of the the channels that did this, I'll put in the description. But this is what Ember. Isn't this awesome? And then the moon's go going over, up to the uh, top left of the sun. I mean, on this this perspective, top left. And then as it passes over, wait for it. And look, you can see that you can see the light coming from that side over as it passes up, kind of thing. It's awesome. Isn't that cool? And I, I love that because it, it shows you how, like, we think the sun's this big ball, and it's not really a, a big ball. Oh, okay, Beck. Um, yeah. Uh, Mm. Yeah, Beck, if you've got some to show, send it over. Oh, come on. And um, yeah, we'll uh you can show it yourself. There's an even better idea. 
you know, I'll, I'll be gracious and allow you to share it. I'll allow it. I'll allow it. Um, now, now, what I have is some of the, the people sort of getting outraged about this. And, and my favourite has got to be um, this, this, this guy by the name of Hagi, right? So, so um, what's his first name? Uh, John Hagi. He's he's hilarious. Uh, you know, I, I absolutely he's probably my second favorite um, doomsday predictor, to be honest with you. Um, you know, like my second, second favorite, um, because my first favorite has got to be Harold Camping. Harold Camping is hilarious because Harold Camping um, did multiple predictions and sort of revised them when when they didn't come true it's actually he's he's quite funny um you know sort of in his his revisionism of the end of the world but um i want to share with you um what this guy is saying um and and sort of comment on it so i'll just quickly grab it um uh, there we go and audio's on excellent okay so this is this is uh, um, John Hagee. And let me know if the sound's okay, all right? Somebody give me some feedback. Let me tell you something that uh, bold if I didn't have a strong Bible foundation for it. And here it is. Luke. I love how he's got to sit on a throne. Like, he doesn't even have a pulpit. He just couldn't be bothered. He just has to sit on a throne, you know, like, wow. 21, 25, the Bible says, and there shall be signs in the sun. That's going to be tomorrow. And then there will be signs in the moon. That's the four blood moons that have already happened, about which I wrote this book that sold over a million copies in a very short period of time. The four blood moons. Yeah, the four blood moons. Shill, shill, shill. Yeah, sell, sell, sell. Yeah, and, and here's the thing about that, that book, right? Here's the thing about that book. What he did is he made a blood moon prophecy. Um it was predicted by a guy called Mark Blitz, and then John Hagee wrote this book in 2014. But they claimed that the tetrad, the 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 um in so these four blood moons represents the beginning of the the messianic end times. So he sort of predicted this for nine years ago, right? And and the the Mormons in Utah combined with sort of you know the September 2015 blood moons increased prepper sales so people literally believe this guy so nine years later and no he didn't no no he did not mention this eclipse in his book okay there was no well you know there's an eclipse some coming to say that it's sort of no he's just tacking this on the the end of it it's incredible he's just sort of saying well in my book i predicted the four moons and this is just more confirmation it's like Nine years later, like how long? And, and I, I want to pose this question. When somebody makes one of these predictions, how long after do we have to wait until we say, hey, you're not right? Like you have predicted this incorrectly. This is not a good prediction. Because he said the start of the end times back in 2014. And, you know, he's, he also said that the corona was the end times. And now this, this, um, eclipses the end times. It, it's it's just ridiculous. And and keep in mind this 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 video has like nearly five hundred thousand views. You know, like people are tuning into this crap. Moons and the stars. So the sun, the moon, and the stars are in fact celestial evangelists who are trying to communicate to people who read the Bible. Yeah. So instead of the moon being a, you know, rock that was shunted off Earth and is in a locked-in orbit, no, it's an evangelist for God. I mean, do you hear yourself speak? Does anybody hear this guy? Like, I... The Bible says, Then they shall see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. These, now the Bible says, And these things begin to happen. Look up. And lift your heads, because your redemption draweth nigh. That's what God is saying. Yeah, so literally anything happening is going to be a sign of the end times. And and hucksters have been pulling this for ages, like for ages. Let me go through some of them. And this is just 
don't forget, this is just the ones that were predicted for the 20th century, okay, and the major ones that were predicted for the 20th century. Um, you know, you have people like um, 2001, uh, Tyanetta Muhammad predicted the end of the world um, in 2001. Uh, 2003, Nancy Leader had the Nibiru cat cataclysm. Um, you, you had the, the Japanese cult in 2003. You had um, Pat Robinson in 2007. So in 1990, Pat Robinson said 2007 is when, when the earth will be destroyed. Like when you're getting to 20-something years, or actually that's more like um, 13, 17 years past um, your prediction, can we then say you're full of crap? You know, can we then say, hey, you don't know what you're talking about? Um, sort of uh, the hermetic order um, predicted in, in 1870, uh, 1887, they predicted it for 2010. Harold Camping, and, and Harold Camping's my favourite, he predicted it for May 2011, right? He predicted that earthquakes would occur and, and there was a, be a rapture and uh, May 2011. Um, he then sort of in 2011, when it failed to come about, he revised it and said it was in on, on May 21. A spiritual judgment took place um, and that the, the rapture was actually occurring in, in October 2011. Uh, so when that didn't happen, he then predicted it for a future further date, which is is just hilarious, you know, just just hilarious. Um, Rasputin, who died in 1916, he prophesied for 2013. And I mean, at least Rasputin had the good sense to prophesize for a time after he was certainly going to be dead. Um, so you know, it uh, it 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 you know, he's not gonna gonna get um, you know. Um, so, yeah, but, uh, just a second, mate. I just gotta, I just gotta deal with something. Um, it's complicated. It's complicated, and I'll take you. I'll run. I'll, I'll run you through it. Um, so, what was I up to? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So, and then there's John Huggy and Mark Blitz. They predicted this thing. Um, David Mead predicted that Nibiru would be uh, visible in the sky and destroy Earth on 2007, uh, 2017, sorry. After his 2017 prediction failed, David Mead predicted it for 2018. And guess what? That didn't happen either. Um, Ronald Wineland, he predicted the world in 2011, 2012, 2013, and 2018. Um, like, at what point do you go stop listening to these people? Stop listening. Um, and, you know, we've got the famous one by, by Kent Hovind, who, who said it would be between 2015 to 2028. I mean, he's running out of time, isn't he, peeps? He is running out of time. Um, I think he sort of said, oh, it's most likely he's trying to give himself an out. But at what point do we go, hey, these people have no idea what they're talking about. Like they're just making up stuff to make people afraid and give them give them money. Um, they, yeah, I, I, I think that we should stop listening to these people. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I totally agree. We absolutely need to stop listening to them. And I mean, it, it's actually most of, and, and some daughters sort of doing this research, it's only sort of idiots like this that do it, but most of the Christian organizations, the mainstream ones, I, I noted to find they sort of said, hey, a lot of these evangelicals are saying, you know, the end of the world's coming. Nobody knows when the end of the world's coming. Stop. Don't listen to them, basically. So it was a nice, pleasant surprise to get that in. But um, I, I think, and I mentioned them earlier, the Proverbs go, I love picking on these guys. I, I got to be honest with you. And I want to give a big shout out to Claude Bowles, who, uh, who I found. Uh, this clip on it was just a short and and I love hassling these guys because they had um they had more evidence for the end of the world coming and you've got to hear this this is 
this is too funny not to share. I realize they're kind of not taken seriously. There's a reason why these guys are not taken seriously. It, it's hilarious. Um, so thank you so much to uh, Claude Bowles. I really appreciate it. Uh, you, you've got to listen to this. And then let me know if you can hear it. And a couple of other things that have happened, like uh, ships falling on bridges. And that was a plural because there was another ship that fell on an American bridge today. How many were the chances of that, brother? Look, how many were the chances of that? It hasn't happened again in the history of maritime. It has never happened again worldwide. And then before the eclipse that is coming, you get two ships on two bridges. Uh, we mentioned a couple of other things that have happened, like uh, ships for. I'm going to run. I'm going to run through it again. Listen to what he says. On bridges. Ships falling on bridges. Okay. Well, that might be just a problem with not understanding English, but they they crashed into. They didn't fall on bridges, but that might be a translation issue. And. That was a plural because there was another ship that fell on an American bridge today. So he's referring to the um, in in um, uh, the uh, I believe it was um, is it Missouri? I, I can't remember where it was. Um, there was one in Hong Kong, um, in China, um, a, a bridge got hit, the Lingxia Bridge, and. It's ships. It's ships. That's just his accent. He's he's Greek, I believe. Um, but it was uh, Baltimore. Where's Baltimore? Where the hell is Baltimore? I, I don't know where Baltimore is. Someone tell me where Baltimore is. Massachusetts? Maybe? I, I, I don't know my states. I'm sorry. Baltimore, Maryland. Oh, okay. Well, I'm totally wrong then. Maryland. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Marty. Appreciate it. Um, yeah. So, so, yeah. This, this, this. They're basically saying, hey, there was a bridge crash in China in January, and there was a bridge crash um, recently, kind of thing. Um, so, um, yeah. How many were the chances of that, brother? Look. How many were the chances of that? It hasn't happened again in the history of maritime. It hasn't happened in the history of maritime. That That is a bold statement, sir. A bold statement. I want to give a big out, shout out to Claude. Um, what I'll do, I'll, I'll just grab um, our Big Bad Mama's channel and Claude's channel because I really want to link them. Uh, if, if I've got a mod that can link them, can somebody do that for me? That would be great, and I can continue on. would be fantastic. I love you so much. Um, I, I, I'll just do it myself. I'll just do it myself. You know, I, I should be more organized. I, I try to be organized. I feel like it doesn't work out sometimes, but, you know, that, that's life for you. Life's messy. You ever notice that? Life, life is messy. Uh, big bad mama. Uh, can we can we have a big bad mama? There's a big bad mama for you. Thank you so much, big bad mama. I really appreciate it. And I want to give a link to our uh, Claude Bowles, who also does sort of shorts of these guys and Hovind and stuff like that. Uh, these guys uh, do some very very funny clips, and all they do is just listen to the the wild and wacky things these people say, and just uh, you know show them to people but i i don't think i've got the patience nor the tenacity nor the sanity to go through what these people say and you know like what hoven says and pick out all of the dumb stuff that he says it's 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 you know they they serve their their planet they serve their planet well but um yeah so that's what they're sort of claiming that that this has never happened in the history of um of, of bridges uh problem is problem is Hammersmith Bridge, uh, bridge crash. Um, there was, a, and this is what twigged me to it, because like, I remember this crash. A ship crashed into a bridge in the 80s in Australia, um, the Tasman Bridge, and it the ship sank and it destroyed the bridge. Like you can see, it's destroyed. This is a, um, a computer simulation of what it would have looked like. 
I saw a massive tanker went straight into the bridge. Like, um, it, it, it's sort of, well, this has never happened, but, like, are you joking? And, and it's not like he's saying, well, um, th th this is so close together. One's in February and one's, like, you know, very recently. It's not that close together. And considering that sort of... Um, shipping has gone up a whole bunch like the the amount of freight that we're sending by by uh cargo like on on ships has gone up a huge amount um it's not really surprising that there's more accidents um and sort of you know sort of a a, a um a, a sort of when when you look at the amount that's happened um and I'll just get it here history of uh bridge incidents um, that there's been from 2016, uh, uh, 1960 to 2015, there's been 35 major bridge collapses. That's just not the small ones due to ship or barge collision with a total of 342 people killed. 18 of those collapses have been in the United States. So out of 35, 18 have been in the United States. And these are the ones just in the United States. 2009, Pops Ferry Bridge. Um, 2001, um, 1993. Eastbridge, 1998, it's not like he's talking like it's this event that's unheard of in the history of him. No, it's not unheard of. It, you know, it's not like a regular occurrence, but big ships hit bridges. I hate to break it to you. And, and you know, it's a bit, it's a bit, um, it's a bit telling that, that more than half of them are in the United States. It probably says something about it. But, um, we're kind of relying more and more on uh, um, automation for ships. It has less crew. Um, you know, the idea that this is this sign of the end of times is just ridiculous. It's the stupidest thing I've heard for quite some time. So apparently the solar eclipse, which is just a predicted astronomical event, and this insanely rare occurrence of a ship hitting bridges, somehow is a sign of the end times. Wow, those guys, I, I swear. I, I swear like they... And see, the thing is, I only, like, checked on this this morning. I, I got up a little bit early, had a bit of time, just, like, saw something from Claude, looked at it, went, oh, dear. Checked it. In, I, I found this within about five minutes. You know, like, what kind of information checking before you put information out in the world where you don't even... Do a, a, a superficial Google check. You just say, hey, this is an unheard of event. It's a sign of the end times. It's ridiculous. Like they don't even care what they're putting out there. I, I think that they're really just trying to scare people, raise money. You're, you know, you need to repent because these things are happening. Um and then, you know, when when these things happen and, and when it fails to come true, you just go to the next thing. You're like this this hag tree guy. You just go to the next thing, go to the next thing, and then say that's a sign of the end times. That's a sign of the end times. Just keep revising, keep reviewing, keep repeating this fear. And you're sort of people to, to be afraid and go, well, it's the end times. I better make good with the Lord. How do I do that? Join the church, donate money. It, it's disgusting. At what point do we go, these people do, they are not prophets of the end time. They're not predictors of the end of the world. They're just people like saying there's going to be an end time. And then, and, and, and I've really been concentrating on this a lot when you are taking the evidence and following it to its conclusion, or whether you are, um, you've got the conclusion and you're just fitting the evidence, you know, just trying to, to put that peg in whatever hole you can fit it in to try and make it to that conclusion that you've already got. And this seems like another case of that. You've got your conclusion that it's the end times, that everything's going to end, and you've got these these events, and all you're doing is just saying, "Hey, that event's a sign because of whatever reason." But yeah, Achilles, one of the dumbest people, and and the most like incomprehensibly um, 
silly people with what he's I don't, I don't think he thinks about what he says before he says it you know we've never seen this happen uh, uh, what in the history of maritime uh, are you serious uh, are you serious I, I i don't know what to say to that i really don't um i i, I think that um we've got to stop sort of paying attention to these people we've got to call them out we've got to sort of say hey you need to provide us with some sort of end date that we will know whether you are right and wrong. Because here's the trick. Here's the, here's the thing. If you just say it will happen at some point in the future, you don't have to back that up with anything. Like take, for exist, uh, example, the Hovind, your average in the wild Hovind. This, this silly creature has basically said it's from 2015 to 2028. Now, he, he's made sure to provide himself with an out. He says it's most likely within those times. I think that's wrong. I, I think you ought to have to say, what is the end date that you are wrong? Because I can say, hey, you know, I'm going to predict you're going to die in the future, most likely between these dates. But if I'm saying that, I could say, oh, I said most likely. I meant in some, how can I be wrong? Like, how can we falsify that? And that's really what I'm getting at. These kind of predictions, like what Proverbs guy is doing and what Haggy, 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 Hagrid, I don't know what his name is. Somebody said that, somebody corrected me with this thing. It's a hard G. Haggy? Isn't that a hard a, isn't Gerhard? I don't know. I, I don't care. Why do I care? Um, anyway, the 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 um um the 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 throne pope guy, the evangelical guy that we saw earlier, he's basically just saying, hey, it's gonna happen in some time in the future. Add this occurrence to it, add this occurrence. And he's basically making a bet that when it happens, because he thinks it's gonna happen, he's gonna, oh look, I was right all along. You weren't right. You weren't right. You were wrong. You, you, you could not predict it. You can't just keep saying this stuff and then claim, oh, well, I was right when it happened. You know, it, it's, it's sort of like making a prophecy that, that you know, you're going to get sick. Oh, when is that? Well, most likely this time, and it's a sign. The fact that you coughed, you sneezed is a sign, and this is a sign, and that's a sign. You know, you, you, you going out in the sun is a sign. And then when you actually get sick, well, look, I knew it all along. I prophesized it. No, that's not a prophecy. That's just bullshit. You're, all you're doing is just repeating the same claim over and over for an indefinite time in the hopes that it'll just happen. There must be some falsifiability to your claim. There has to be. You have to be able to say, here is how I know that claim is wrong. That's how I know. Hey, hey, gee, hey, gee. Hagee. Hey, That's a terrible name. I hate it already. Hagee. Hey, so it's not Hagee. Hey, Hagee. Hey, wow. Oh, so it's a hard Y. Hagee. Hey, hey, seed. I, I don't, I don't even, you know, I don't even care really. It, it's just the, these kind of predictions, they, they've always been used by people throughout the century. We, we kind of know that witches' curses have worked in this way. Sort of so when somebody says, hey, I curse you, um, I curse you with sickness kind of thing, the, the, the person, they're just, when they actually get sick, they go, oh, they did it. Um, so the technical term, and I realise this is sort of boring philosophy that nobody really wants to know, but it's, it's sort of um, post hoc ergo prompter hoc is the name of the fallacy. So it's um, afterwards, therefore, before um, is kind of how it translates it. It basically means just because one thing follows another doesn't mean that is the cause, right? It, it doesn't mean that is the cause. So you can sort of say, um, like, every time you get into the car, you put your seatbelt on. So therefore, when you get into a crash, the seatbelt was the cause. 
just because it came before what happened doesn't mean it is the cause of what happened. It's um, um, post hoc ergo prompter hoc, I believe it is. Uh, I'll just double check that. Um, so um, basically it means sort of, so the witch's curse is kind of, oh, I curse you with sickness. So the next time you, you get sick, you're like, well, they cursed me with sickness, then I got sick. And the thing is, it's kind of, um, it may have happened months later, and that's kind of the insidious thing that they do. They kind of go, well, the witch's curse can take ages to take effect. But that was going to happen anyway. There are people getting sick without this prophecy being made, without this prediction being made, right? So. Um, how does one counter that convo? Well, uh, you know, you've got to got to think rationally um, and and think about well, what about all the times somebody has gotten sick and nobody predicted it, and and sort of try to think rationally about why this is a sign of the end times. You know, why does a ship crashing into a bridge mean it's a sign of the end times? Why does an eclipse mean a sign of the sun? You've got to sort of um, pressure people on, well, in order to be a prophecy, it's got to be specific. Because if it's not specific, it's kind of useless. And we're all familiar with the prophecies of Notre Dame that can basically be interpreted any way they want. Um, I'll say if Nostradamus had end of the world prediction, but basically the whole point about the prophecies of Notre Dame, and I remember reading that book, right um that they're, they're kind of very similar to barnum statements they're kind of statements that everybody can relate to or anybody can can sort of um um anybody um can can interpret however they want it's a bit like um astrology for instance you'll meet a tall dark and handsome stranger it, it you know it's kind of that well, if you think about it rationally, and if you take a, a open interpretation of that, you can you can sort of see how that would apply to you um, most months, if not most weeks. Um, you you might see them, and it is the prophecy that makes you aware of that instance happening, because it was prophesized. You notice something when you didn't before. And then that's what leads to what's called confirmation bias. So your your astro astrologer who you're paying you know twenty five dollars and a, a, a half per half hour to by calling up on your you know phone line, they say, hey, you will meet a a bald man who changes the framing of your world, and it's because you've been told that that when you do come across my channel, you're like, wow, they were right. That was going to happen anyway. That's got nothing to do with their prediction. They didn't predict it. They just said something that could easily be interpreted. And if it wasn't me, it may have been somebody else. You might have come across Matt Delahunty's channel. You might have come across, you know, a person at work who says, hey, do you know you can um, uh, uh, open your task manager by typing this in kind of thing? They all count. And that's the whole point about Barnum statements. Everything counts. Mm. Yeah, absolutely, Aunt Jerry. I love that example. You have changes in your path coming up. Yeah. That's what they do. That's what they do. And at one point, I kind of believed all this stuff. I, I, I sort of um, believed it. I, I can grow a beard, but I don't like beards. And, and uh, uh, I don't like beards. And I, I don't. My wife definitely doesn't like a beard. So, yeah. Yeah, so I, I um, yeah, I, I really think that that this eclipse is a whole bunch of just another another instance of these doomsday prophecies that nobody should believe. But but how do you have that conversation with somebody? I think you've got to pin them down. Um, I remember there was um, I don't know if anyone remembers Wesley. And, and I kind of, I really feel for Wesley. Um, Wesley 
something, Curry the Third, I believe it is, who who sort of predicted the end times constantly. And so I pinned him down to when will this actually happen? Because he had an instance in Chicago where there was a, a, a bomb was going to go off or something like that. And, um, you know, a, a car was involved. He said it was a green car, all these details. And, uh, you know, I wrote them down. I do have it in my notebook. So I pinned him down to when is this going to happen? And he said by last year, November and the latest. At what point do we say, hey, that is absolutely not, not true? And sort of I haven't talked to Wesley since. I, I He's too disruptive to have him on a panel, but it's kind of a shame because I would like to say, hey, what happened there? And can you at least admit you were wrong? But, he, you know, as far as I know in the times where I've seen him, he's still going around saying the same stuff just for a different, you know, sometime in the future. It's really sad. You know, he's, he's constantly in this, well, it's the end times, the world's going to end. I can't imagine living like that. I wouldn't want anybody to live like that. So, yeah, if they're right, they should be able to pin down to at least a, an end date of when, hey, this is when we tell you are wrong. As far as I'm concerned, Hoven said it was, you know, up to 2028. So if we get to there and it hasn't happened, he's wrong. He's just wrong, and nobody should listen to him. Not only for that, but um, thing I did it, GG. Oh, hey, Robin, I love you, Robin. Thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. How are you? I'm good. I couldn't believe nobody was in here, so I had to come on. Yeah, yeah, flood the room, absolutely. Yeah, I, I had hoped that more theists would come in and sort of because they all told me how easy it was to do to go into somebody's room who disagree with you, but they're gutless. Yeah. yeah As yeah. we say in Australia, they're gutless. They're gutless wonders. <laughs> At least we don't ban them like they do me. They've got me muted on most of them. I can't even talk. Yeah, and that's, chat. that's shocking. <laughs> yeah, that's shocking. Yeah, I mean, I will mute certain people, but I think I'm I'm pretty good with not muting people until they they very much deserve it. You know, I I I think I've got I've got a room rumble to bring out actually. If you're interested, it's with bubbles basically, bubble gum gun. Oh and, yes, you know, that should be a good one. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it it's just it's it's a little frustrating for me, but um, yeah, it, it's just and, and you know he's banned off here for I think very very good reasons. I don't think he's genuine. I don't think he wants a real conversation. Every um, time, every time I like run into him, I ask if he starts sparting off to me. We, most time he don't so much, but if he does, yeah. I always ask him about the gnomes, and he kind of goes silent. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's just it's just one of those things. It's just you know, if you're going to believe that that you know God, God, you know why not God? Um, it, it's sort of like what I was sort of saying um, that we don't believe things until they're proved to be false right? right like we 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 um don't believe them until they're proved to be true or at least we have you know enough evidence i think that's right yes it, it, it took me but i was pretty old before i learned that actually right right um probably matt dill hunty probably like yeah put that in my head more than anybody um yeah you were talking about the witches' curses, but I go, you know, it, it's it does a lot of it has a mental effect on people if you tell them they're cursed. Um, mm. Well, we have in Australia. I don't know if you've heard of it. Um, the pointing of the bone, um, done by the the native Australians. Yeah, um, the, the first nations. Yeah, yeah. So they they do this ritual where if somebody has done something, um, one of the the elders, um, sort of a spiritual leader. Will, will point a bone at them and it involves a lot of dancing and chanting and things like that. And they're supposed to get sick and die and they sort of claim that it works. Um, but it only works, uh, it, you know, and, and we've seen people um, get sick from it, but it only works on people that believe it works. Like they've That's done right. it on, you know, people with different cultural upbringings and it just doesn't work, you know. Kind of like demon possessions. Right. They, they don't. Atheists don't ever get possessed by demons. I, no, <laughs> yeah, we don't have that problem. <laughs> yeah, 
did you see the eclipse? Did you see anything about yeah. it? Yeah, it was okay. uh, it was pretty it was pretty um cloudy here, but we could see okay. it. You know, it wasn't a totality, but it was we had we all only had a small sliver. And then I watched mm. it, I watched it on Ember Stream. Like she oh, had okay. yeah, she was, yeah. Yeah, she was out there out out in the field, you know, with her her drone and all mm -hmm. that stuff. So yeah, yeah. I showed the footage earlier. I sped it up because it was kind of, you know, but it did fantastic footage. You know, you can just see how small, like how, you know, we think of the the uh, the sun as this sort of big ball in the sky, but when the moon covers it, it's actually very small. You know, it's kind of yeah, it, it's not it's all the glare from around it that that yeah. you know makes it look big. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty cool how they're how they're just about the right size, you know. Which uh, mm -hmm. I heard Aiden say yesterday that I think Jupiter has a moon that actually completely does eclipse the sun, like when it going around, you know, in rotation. Ours is like just a little bit, our moon is a little bit too small. So we get, that's why we get all that light around the sides of it there. I guess they're pretty close though, on, you know, like the distance and how big they are for you know compared to each other when we look at them so yeah yeah I, and sort of so what brought to my mind was p-town's sort of oh it's a sign of god kind of thing um yeah, yeah. p-town thinks everything is a sign of god <laughs> yeah yeah i know i know it's all signs <laughs> yeah it, it it's sort of but when when you look at them they're not even um they're not even that close to size it's just from our perspective like it's just a perspective thing yeah um you know it, it's like um and and to sort of say hey um you know if, if you look at something with your thumb in front of your eye and it covers it kind of thing um if you move your thumb it sort of it doesn't it doesn't get that much difference and when you have something further away it it doesn't you know that that doesn't make it. Um, it. It's because things within a certain size, you can vary them a lot, and they'll yeah. look the same size when they're really far away. Yeah. So um, it's not it's not a um, great surprise um, that that you know one blocks out the other. I, I don't see it as a great surprise in any way, shape, or form. No, I'm one one of my Facebook friends that I know. She's she had a post up about something about the we the country, the way the country was going. That God was, you know, and it had a picture like of lightning striking the Statue of Liberty. And I, I said, I you know, I, I just I feel like that these are just things that are that happen to bodies that are in orbit. You know, I mean, right. The, they we orbit and, and we're orbiting the sun, the moon's orbiting us, and everything's orbiting, and eventually mm -hmm. all that's going to line up somewhere. You know what I mean? And you know, every so many years, it's not it doesn't happen that often. So it's, I mean, it like that. And I said, mm -hmm. you know, I don't. I feel like that God was okay with slavery, and when we wiped out all of the indigenous people on the on the continent, I'm pretty sure that. You know, whatever we got going on right now is not bad enough to warrant getting, you know, demolished by God because of how bad our country is. Was it uh, the Cristo Redenza in, in South America, maybe? Lightning struck that? Because I remember seeing a few. Cause oh, I, well, this, I, I, this was just a Statue of Liberty. It was a meme okay. that this woman posted, you know. Well, it's, I mean, it's, it's a big copper statue. I don't. You know, yeah. it's a conductor. Like, what are you talking about? Um, Hand there. <laughs> well, I, I remember saying, because this kind of stuff fascinates me, this end of the world sort of thing. I was going to do like a series um, and it didn't, I, I didn't like how it turned out, like the first couple of episodes turned out. So I kind of canned it, but I would like to do it um, on like called the doomsayers, basically, but, like just examining these apocalypse claims. It, it's just very interesting to me um it's not that i believe them or think they carry it's just it's interesting to see what why do people believe this stuff i, but think, I don't know but i think it scared people i, I mean i oh, i don't well, know yeah. i had friends on here you know like we have a friend that um uh, i thought maybe a gangster might have been a little frightened by it you know and 
children and stuff like that. I mean, you know, I remember one of my friends talking about coming home from school one day and every, all and his parents were gone, you know, and he thought that they had been raptured. That was his first thought that they had been raptured. You know what I mean? And he thought that his not whole that they were just was, out. Yeah, his yeah. Whole not, family was gone. Just him and his oh dog no. were all that was left. And and he he was like so upset. You know, he talked oh about how no. upset he was. And and I was like, he was like, that was the first thing because that's how much I, I guess his parents talked about it. Is that that was the first thing coming to his mind? Oh my gosh, everybody's been raptured, and I'm not going. You know, and I'm left here. I was like. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's not even really funny though to laugh at a kid like that. It's just, I don't know. I don't, I don't even know why. If you thought the world was going to end, you would still be having children. I, I, that's what I don't understand. Hey, Blaster Master, how you hey. doing? I'm, I'm good. How are you guys? Yeah, fantastic. I'm sorry. Um, well, I remember one guy sort of. Sorry, Blaster Master. I'll get in one second. I just want to sort of say. I remember. So the Cristo Redenza. I think it's in Brazil. Uh, Rio de Janeiro got struck by lightning and this person was sort of saying, oh, it's a sign of the end times, you know, it got struck by lightning and damaged kind of thing. And and I looked into it and apparently it struck by lightning every single year. Like it, it, it struck by lightning all the time. Yeah. And it's sort of this this idea of they don't check the, so so the average believer doesn't check these people's claims. You know, they don't say, Hey, is that actually a, a weird occurrence or is this something that is commonplace? Yeah. Because there are all these comments under it saying, you know, oh, yeah, absolutely. It, you know, th this is a sign. This is the sign of the end kind of thing. And it's like he's taken something trivial, like the, the Statue of Liberty being struck by lightning or somebody's parents going out an unusual time and then reinterpreting it to mean that. But that story about the kid, I can imagine how upset the kid would be. I guess that's oh, a, yeah, he, he, everyone's he gone to heaven except me. Like, that's child abuse to teach. He got, like, off, he got off the school bus or something, and uh, they were gone. Mm. But I mean, I just thought, I was, I said, that's strange. That was the first thing that came to your mind. You know what I mean? Mm. The, I, I mean, my mom believes in that stuff, but she didn't sit around, you know, doomsday and yeah. about the, the rapture. I mean, uh, I would love to have had some like helium balloons yesterday, like shaped like people or something. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's so, yeah, it's evil. <laughs> that's evil. Put some clothes out, you know. Like, I, heard, I heard out. about that one: people playing pranks by putting clothes on the ground, kind of thing. And apparently, yeah. Christians I mean, freak kind of out, you know. Yeah, because they'd be the ones that were left would be. But you're stuck with us. Yeah. <laughs> and Blaster Master, did you see the eclipse? Did you uh, have a uh, yeah? I had sixty-eight percent totality here. Oh, cool, cool. So, so I'm, I'm as I said to one of my friends, I'm, I'm just going to live vicariously through all your northern hemispheres, basically, because I don't, I don't get that. <laughs> A few years ago, there was that one where it was like it was called like a blood moon eclipse or something like that. Do you remember yeah, that one? Yeah. I, that one, that one, I had like ninety-eight percent totality here. That oh, was cool. really cool looking. Yeah, it went like pitch black. It was awesome. Well, I've been in eclipses. There, it's a weird feeling. It's a surreal mm -hmm. feeling. But and you know, people go, "Oh, but that's that's because of God's sign." And it's like, no, but you get the same feeling in liminal spaces. You know what I mean? Like when you go yeah. to say a carnival and nobody's yeah. there. You know, it's closed. Or you go to what's usually a busy office and nobody's there. There's a feeling of wrongness that comes up. It's not some sort of spiritual sign. It's just we kind of get used to certain things. And so when we see things with that, with one element missing, it, fe it feels wrong to us. I don't think that's a sign. I think it's just the same as liminal spaces. You know, it just feels right. weird. I saw a video of gorillas. I was trying. I was looking to see what zoo they were in. Um, but they, it was like they were in a zoo, and it was big old family gorillas, and it was the, they were filming them during the eclipse, Ooh. and their, their reaction. And they, I like the the bit one of the bigger ones, like just really freaked out, throw everything down on the ground, and ran around there. Which I kind of thought they don't need to be looking at it. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I guess they probably couldn't give them glasses, but you know what I mean? They, I know that would have to hurt their eyes like it does ours. And um, I hate that, you know, because they could mess up their eyes real bad. But it's, 
but the, it, it ran around there just like was looking up. It was, it kind of, you know, it, cause it got so dark, I guess. Right. It, it, yeah, it probably freaked it out. Yeah. Yeah. There was a lot of animals really that got real, um, like stressed, I reckon yesterday, like the ones that were in the total, you know, area of totality. So, so it got so dark in the middle of the day. They didn't understand what was going on. I said, well, that, it's easy to imagine. You know? Yeah, it's easy, it's easy <laughs> right. to imagine like astro, um, you know, astropithecus or whatever. Can you imagine being, you know, one of them or or Homo habilis or something like that? And that does that, you know, and it goes dark in the middle of the day. Mm. I mean, that would be really scary to yeah you know, to not have any kind of clue about what that was, and that to happen and it get dark like that in the middle of the day that would be very scary i would think yeah absolutely um and and here's the thing like the eclipse happened and somebody said oh there was people hooting and hollering and you know sort of outside drinking kind of thing while this happened you know we go crazy as well like yeah. just hoot and <laughs> holler and run around and you know it, it, we're we're, we're the, the 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 sort of behaviors that we show are so indicative uh, and i think that um richard Daw <laughs> yeah well richard dawkins i think he described as the lowly stamp of our origins kind of thing about this sort of very animalistic behaviors that we are want to display um yeah. you know when stresses come up especially in in mobs and 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 sort of um social activity i think there's something very much to that we can yeah, sort of see that he yeah. should say it's about a, a species, what, two chromosomes away from yeah. a chimpanzee or whatever. So, yeah. Well, I think he said half a chromosome. Or maybe it was, uh, but something like that. It was yeah. half a chromosome away from a chimpanzee. <laughs> yeah, because the, the only difference is that chromosome two is split into 2A and 2B for them. Like, that's the that's the difference. That's the big thing between us, really. I mean, there's other differences, don't get me wrong, but... Yeah, that is that is the big one between us and other apes. It's chromosomes. They're cousins. They're cousins. What's cousins? The apes. The, the other apes. They're the just cousins. Oh well, yeah, not not literally, but yeah, I get what you mean. We're definitely very closely related to to chimps and bonobos. Um, yes. I, I, I I think more chimps behaviorally, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Very I, I see both. Uh, Non-aggressive. I see both. Yeah, I see. I see both. I mean, I see uh, traits from the chimps, and I see traits from the bonobos. You know, it's it's really it's really neat. It, it kind of fills in a gap, you know, on our behavior that that doesn't sit with just the chimps. You know, uh, the chimps are um, more violent. You know, they act more like you know the bad part of us sometimes, uh, and like bonobos, you know, they don't do that. And, um, but they will kill other, I, I watched a thing the other day, they will kill other monkeys though and eat them. Yes. Actually. And, yes. Yeah. And they're very clever in doing it. You know, they're, they're sort of yeah. very organized and will sort of, you know, make traps for them and stuff. It's but, actually pretty horrifying. But the females you know, actually help the other females deliver children, the babies. Um, Wow. And that is like the only animal species that I know of that actually assists. Uh, it's you know it's in childbirth. Like they will actually. That's interesting. Help. Yes. What about maybe like dolphins or something? Maybe. Well, I mean, there's not really much they can do though. Assist, but yeah, I don't think so. I mean, hmm. they probably would. Like a whale, a whale. You know, their brain, the part of their yeah, brain just... that processes emotions. And 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 like bonds and stuff is so much bigger than ours, and and so that's like when they will ground, you know, like a male whale when they get a, an orca, when they get a certain mm -hmm. age, if they end up grounding, like all of them will ground and they'll all die together. They're they're very yeah, uh, I've seen that. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, you'll find like just you know if one of them gets grounded, all the rest of them will ground with it and die. Is that just like a group think? It's, or... well, see, the orcas are like they stay together with the females, mm -hmm. and so when the males get a certain age after they're like, um, I think they're like maybe nine or ten years old, somewhere around there, 
they have they leave their mothers and they go and they stay in a all male group for several years like till they're like around age 20 or somewhere like mm -hmm. that till they're like adults basically yeah and they will but they will they're, they're like teenagers and they will stay right. they will stay together in that all male group and they are very tight you know and and they are out they're they're just they're they're very they have a lot of emotions they they feel you know they yeah i think grieve. whales are incredibly interesting because they've had the their language has, has developed for so much longer than ours has well every pod has its own language like which the science don't really like to call a language but they mm -hmm. they every pod has its own dialect right so they don't they actually like you can take whales from two different parts of the world and they might not even be able to communicate with each other because right, they have different accents and they yeah. might even speak like a basically a different language almost yeah. right and then you've got like uh you've got whales that live in domestic like groups and mm -hmm. then there's transient whales too that are orcas that never do they stay in like transient groups of three the loners and um they're they're like they're um they they're, they're almost considered a different species right now they they're considering considering them a different species um, because they're so independent and they just have so much different um behaviors and communication yes. and like the the way they make their sounds and everything and the way they feed and they've actually caught uh them on film hunting with sperm whales hunt, hunting wow. together with sperm whales the orcas aren't, and the sperm whales were actually yeah aren't together. sperm whales supposed to be one of the, like the most more intelligent whales right yes. those and orcas yeah. basically and the orca will eat a sperm whale if it's a small one or if it's mm -hmm. injured, you know injured or something but do they, they actually eat, do they eat they each actually, other though well they actually the orcas no they won't eat each other yeah okay interesting no they they eat uh uh great white sharks though they will eat the uh, the only thing they'll eat yeah. is the liver they eat the liver out of it right they just take a big old bite out of that one spot well they they usually like i've watched them kill one and kill the other day they they'll hit it real hard with like their nose and everything yeah. and it kind of knocks it out and then they turn the shark upside down and leave it like upside down and push it up to the top to where it's not got no yeah. water going yeah, and then it suffocates yeah 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 they know that that if they can if they put them in a certain position like upside down or something they just they're basically screwed. stop working well they just sort of go limp kind of thing so yeah. right they're really intelligent yes and hunting together like watching i've watched them hunt the seal which i hate watching it through the sea lions and stuff yeah get, that's rough want, one will get on the uh, ice, you know, and they will bust that ice up and they'll hit that iceberg and make that sea lion like bounce, you know, until they can bounce it off of that. I can't, mm. I can't hardly watch it. I'm, are you, are you like a biologist, Robin? No, I'm a I truck driver. Like <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Word. You're like, I, I have, just like this stuff. Me too. I have daughters that do <laughs> that. Though, so yeah you probably learn a bit of it from them right like the what no, does, no. Didn't one, one used to want to be a um but marine she, biologist but she, she changed she, her mind well she had a minor in it she's my she's yeah, got a minor yeah. in it she's still got marine, yeah, can, but she's not going to do that for she's going to teach but oh uh, marine biology over here is huge because of the amount of coastline oh, yeah. that australia has and plus you know I places like the, the great barrier reef is is an absolute treasure of the ocean i could think I've swum in the Great Barrier Reef. It is incredible. It just, just and scary. <laughs> um, I mean, I did see a shark. You know, yeah. Um, but I, I wouldn't say scary as such. No, not really. Uh, I mean, you just, yeah, you you stay the away. The ocean from, like, freaks me out a little bit. Oh, okay. Really? You know what okay. I mean? Well, just the big. You know, when I is jump like, in and yeah, I see a ten foot oh, yeah. eel, you know that kind of. It's kind of like okay <laughs> does that happen a lot or well the time i mean like when i've been snorkeling in like yeah. tropical waters that does happen yeah. yes <laughs> yeah i saw oh, in look. hawaii it, i saw like, just mostly colorful ship fish there yeah I, i've snorkeled in a lot of places i've snorkeled in fiji i've snorkeled in uh vanuatu which is absolutely gorgeous like they have some amazing reefs around there um so 
sort of mass wise, you're a lot bigger than everything else in the water. And most things don't know what you are. They just avoid right. you. I think I think that sort of we we have this idea of things attacking us when things don't attack us. No, you know what happened when I was circling in Hawaii was like this I saw this thing swim towards me that was big. It was like six feet big, and I was like, what the hell is that? I was like, is that a shark or something? And then yeah. it comes over, I see it gets closer, and it turns out to be a, like a, a monk seal. Yeah. And they're uh, they're endangered because they're so friendly. It just came right up to me. I just scratched his belly. It tried to knock the goggles off my face so it could get a better look at me. <laughs> and then it started humping my dad's leg underwater, and I nice. got some good yeah. pictures of that. <laughs> I'm still real friendly, confirmed. Um, did anyone see that footage with the leopard seal that tried to feed the diver? No, that's... So, so cool, do you know though. what a leopard seal is? Hold on, I'll just, yeah. I'll just find it. What was it trying uh, to feed it? Like a penguins. fish or something? Penguins. Penguin? <laughs> yeah. You know, I learned um, that penguins will like, they will go up on the stand on the cliff, at the edge of the cliff, and they'll push one of them off to see if there's any predators in the water. Well, well leopard oh, seals right. are big. <laughs> they're probably about as big as us real. in the water. They are massive. Like, they're real big. Yeah, they're, uh, they're, they're not like, a small seal. They're one of the largest predators out there, right? And they're they're serious. They don't mess around. Yeah. So that that's the like, leopard seal. They're kind of scary. Right. But this leopard seal, and I'll just get to the footage, maybe. Oh, yeah, aren't they cool. cute? Their teeth are so scary. Show their teeth. Yeah. So that's that's one of the, the footage that he got. It came up and tried oh to feed gosh. the penguins. But he's, so talking cute. About, he's talking about how, like, it came up and sort of nudged at him and sort of he could tell that it was wondering why he wasn't moving or trying to hunt the penguins that were around kind of thing. Yeah, he's like, what are you doing, dude? Yeah, he, he thought it was, he like the, the leopard seal thought he was sick, so it actually crunched up the penguin and tried to push it into his camera. Oh. Right, it's trying, this leopard dude, seal. seals was, are awesome. Look though, at the I'm size telling... of these things. Look at the size Yeah, they're scary, dude. Yeah, they're That's like... really big. But it, it, so this leopard seal came up and tried to help him. To, like, the leopard seal thought he was sick and couldn't eat. So it's trying to give him food and help him. And this is sort of um, this, this that idea. That's why Brie, who nature I have to give a freak shout out to nature, Brie, right? And much love to Brie, Hive Science in the, in the chat. Yeah. Lots of love. Um, hey, Brie. You know, I, I feel like, and I hear about this kind of stuff. I feel like she's got a point that animals might have morality, kind of thing. You know, oh, like they this absolutely is, do. Well, I, I would say they have a proto morality that it's not sort of codified into societies. But the, I absolutely agree. If if it is it is so close to morality, it really is maybe a definitional thing that is is making it not. Well, some of them you know have what I mean? Have empathy. Some of them show empathy. I, I told oh, there, oh yeah. There was a, there was that actually was alligators in India that that got a wild dog away from a pack of wild dogs. Four alligators. They get yeah. they got they they carried the dog and turned it loose. They they let it it like they carried it across the water because there was a, like a pack of dogs attacking it, and alligators or crocodiles. They were crocodiles. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Who would have thought a crocodile would have empathy? I mean that's uh, like yeah. that's like a you know really simple. They definitely life form, have personalities, you know I mean? right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but to, to just to na and naturally in the wild to have empathy, a yeah, crocodile. It's... I mean that's even they they would probably be less likely to have I mean, an alligator. That was like when I was snorkeling and the wild seal just showed up and I started. I, mean, I was just petting it, like it was a dog. Yeah. It was the weirdest thing. That thing had some bad teeth <laughs> though. Lord. I'm like, oh, it is a sea dog. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That would be an amazing experience, though. Blast it was. Awesome. Like, orcas had never so heard of human in the wild before. No, it's just when we imprison them. The only ones like them, Tilikin, you know. Tilikin that was at SeaWorld or whatever in Sealand in Canada, he killed three people. Um, but he know, was abused. Like, that, yeah, that yeah, he was animal abused. was abused, and that is I, so wrong. I was giving the the corvids around here, the crows, like cashews, and they all befriended me, <laughs> and they so, all know me now. 
<laughs> crows are scarily really smart. smart. I don't know if yeah. they're like that over there, but they're scarily smart yeah, they are. over here. Um, I, I have a friend who lives on a farm, and he said, like, you can, you can, um, because he has to do hunting. There's a lot of sort of feral pigs around his area, which mm -hmm. can be quite dangerous. Um, so um, he does have a gun. He says, if you point a gun at the crows, they'll all take off, right? They'll just yeah, fly away. They know. Right? If you give but them if you get a nut. Well, just a sec. If you get a okay. stick, right, the size of a gun, and point it at them, they'll just sit there. They recognize yeah, the difference between a firearm and a stick. Like, they wow. know the, the difference. Um, Dude, they've can... done studies yeah, with crows, and they actually understand displacement. So they have food at the bottom of water that they can't reach, and they understand they can make the food rise by putting stones in right. the water. And the yeah. water level rises carrying the food with it. And they under that is that's an understanding of displacement. In, you know, it's not the calculations and stuff, but it's a it's an understanding of the practicalities of it. Um, and the last thing I'll say, one of the funniest things I ever saw was like I was walking along this street, and you know those kind of weeping willows that kind of have those long trailing, you know, yes. leaves kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I saw a crow holding onto one of those with his beak and bouncing up and down. Like just, just bouncing playing. all around the place. Yeah. And then basically I'm sitting there going, what am I looking at? And this crow dropped to the floor, looked at me, ruffled its feathers, and then like looked back at the thing, then to me, and then just walked off. Like I didn't even fly. It just walked off. It yeah. was like, I, I swear it was embarrassed. It was like, I, I was having fun, you know, and then just walked off. Kind. Of. I was like, what did I just witness? Because I felt like this, you know, I'd caught a human, you know, doing right. something silly and childish and they've gone yeah okay i'm, I'm just gonna walk away kind of thing like, the hell <laughs> they're like you got at? me <laughs> yeah 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 it was awesome i you know really, no, they're weird. really they're really clever like so yeah. when i was feeding them like one of the crows like kind of like got a crush on me you know it was like I always come over and start bobbing its head at me and everything and i had like another like raven kind of friend that was followed me from my old apartment it followed me into my new house across the town mm -hmm. and it saw the crow was like had a crush on me basically and it was like bobbing his head all at me all the time and the raven came down one day and just started laughing at the crow and it was so funny it was so obvious that the raven would just thought it was the funniest thing that that crow was in love with me he was like, ah, ha, ha. <laughs> he's like I can't believe you're you're in love with this human it's so silly <laughs> crows will just, take a like a nut if they, if they can't yeah. get into it and they will take it and they will lay it out in the middle of traffic in the intersection yeah and, and, and cars run over, over it and bust it open and then they'll run out there when the light changes too i've watched them they will watch the light and they will go out into the intersection when the light changes and they know it's safe and they'll get their nut yeah i think it's safe to say if humans die off that crows probably have a good chance of being the like top species on earth you know <laughs> they'll be the next species to to take over what is the next species to take over i don't know i'm kind of going for for um cephalopods that's my cephalopods. bet right octopi octopuses mm -hmm. um, the problem is is they're in the water they're stuck in the water well, you know, you could say that we're stuck on land. You know, we're stuck. Yeah, but we have air. access to fire. They don't need yes. fire. And so would crows, right? They don't live very long, though. Octopuses don't have very long lifespan. Well, they well, like that's eight true. years. But, but well, like crows don't have prehensile, like they don't have opposed thumbs or anything that right. you really delicate grasping. Well, they do and, have. And they can grasp. Octopuses do. Okay. They do have okay, one. Go ahead. I was going to say, they're pretty ambidextrous. Like, I don't know if that's really such an issue because they can use tools, right? Octopuses, yeah. yeah. No, wedge. crows. They can, they can wedge. Corvid can, too. They can, like, wedge and, like, pry and stuff like yeah. that. There's been plenty of tests on corvids. They they know how to use tools very well. I, I, Not... I, I found a video yesterday, and I don't even know what kind of bird it is, but it sort of looks like a dinosaur. But it's a pretty tall bird. I don't think it's an emu or whatever. But it's on a golf course, and it 
figures out that if it, it can bounce the golf ball on the the golf cart path, the con, you know, the black top oh, golf yeah. cart path, and it runs and it does that like I don't know how many times. It it, it puts that ball on its beak and it, it right. slams its head real hard so that it hits that you know it throws that ball real hard down and it bounces way up in the air and it goes and it chases it again and. It, you get so excited. It's the funniest video I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> that bird is like so excited. His feathers just go all crazy. But it, it's like a real tall bird, but it don't look like it's not. It, it doesn't look as big as um as like an emu or an ostrich, though. I I mean, well, I agree That's with Mark maybe? that the octopi are really smart. It's like, something, I think it's they, not, it looks like a dinosaur, though. It's <laughs> exactly what it looks like. It looks like worry, probably. Dinosaur. Yeah, Casserole yeah, worry, those are incredibly dangerous. Incredibly dangerous, yeah. yeah. It has a ball with those golf balls. Like it takes those balls, it like hits, it like springs them down real hard, and makes them bounce crazy. way up in the air. <laughs> it's hilarious. Ostrich or something, maybe. You gonna see if you can find it? That's funny. But no, I was gonna say, yeah, I think one of the fun. things that you need to like, one of the peaks in like being intelligent is being able to master fire right like without fire you can't have a, a ton of other things intelligent without fire yeah yeah but the problem is they'll never advance technologically because they can't build fire basically they, can't, they don't have hands they can't they're, harness fire they're made their biggest problem no that is true hold on i just want to share this because this is just too cute i think this from is my understanding of birds i used to have a parrot and that thing scared the crap out of me because it was so damn smart. It's yeah. a, according to Bree, who I would trust, it's a Seriema. That's a lovely okay. name, Seriema. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that Bree. Yeah. Certainly would, correct me if I'm it not. It looks just like a raptor. <laughs> oh, terror birds. Yeah, I've seen terror mm. birds. That looks horrifying. That's like um, a very chunky version of that bird, but. Um, like the size of a person kind of bit, like absolutely frightening. Uh, they're the reason why they're called terror birds, I think. Um, but yeah, you ever heard yeah, of I mean, a thunderhawk? I'd say she knows who it is. Mark? I'd say Bree knows what it is, that's for sure. I, I they don't exist thunder. anymore, but there used to be hawks in the US that in the Americas that were called thunderhawks, they were super giant. Oh, wow. Okay. I mean, I'm aware of um, sort of things like mowers kind of thing, but that were massive sort of um, massive emu-like birds. Or I guess, you I guess, should, uh, yeah. Let's see if I can find. They, I don't think it was, I don't think they went extinct that long ago. It was like a couple hundred years ago, maybe. Mowers? Thunderhawks. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know. From the I've US. heard of that one. So... We like well, that's why you hear like there's a lot of American like bait like athletic teams named after that sort of thing is like because there's a lot of Native American stories about them. Oh, I thought that was um Thunderbirds. To be honest with you, I'm not I'm not sure Thunderhawk. I haven't heard of that one. Maybe I'm thinking. Maybe I'm not I'm sure that's what they're called. Maybe I'm using the wrong term. I, I don't know, but I mean. I put Bree, in Bree, am I wrong? Am I wrong, Bree? Bree, you know about Thunderhawks? <laughs> she'll, she'll know. It's all good. But anyway, they were like bird. They were like hawks with like twelve foot wingspans. They were gigantic, apparently. Wow. Yeah, haven't haven't heard of that. That's interesting, though. I mean, I, I love some of the um the sort of megafauna that has gone extinct like the um megatherium for instance which is a huge ground sloth essentially like it's absolutely massive um but i want to link Bree's channel and much loved brie i yeah I, that's yeah. yeah those giant sloths were probably one of the scariest things you could probably come across i would imagine oh because yeah they didn't move they weren't slow like a normal like a regular right, like a right. sloth is now yeah they were like a bear. Uh, not sure, Bray. Teratornus. Um, large birds of prey. T 
Teratonus. They're related to New World vultures. Okay, gotcha. Well, I mean, condors are bloody massive as well. Like they are really big. Yes. Actually, we get um galahs over here, which are, are incredibly cute. They're uh, pink and grey galahs, and you get um um sulfur crested cockatoos and stuff like that. Yeah, they're, they're I was, so cheeky as well. I was just up at my buddy's place. He lives on the Salmon River. And there was a, a a golden eagle, or not a golden eagle, yeah, a golden eagle that was there, not a bald eagle. And, I, and the golden eagles are generally bigger than the bald ones. Mm -hmm. That that sucker must have been twenty years old. He was he's gigantic. Like you just see a shadow, you know. I'm like that's how yeah. I spotted him. I just saw a giant shadow going across the yard. I'm like look up. I'm like holy crap. <laughs> An eclipse, if you will. They eclipse. Yeah. The <laughs> exactly. And all the birds and everything around there is just deathly silent when he shows up you know there's no other osprey or hawks yeah. or anything in there yet everyone's just like we're getting out of here yep yeah, yeah golden racing. eagles are like um sacred to the cherokee oh are they yeah now i'm, I'm cherokee so that's um nice Aunt Jer oh, said, yeah. Aunt Jer said that the the bird was trying to keep to break open the golf ball that she oh, that would be right. That she mm. saw footage of a of one it wanted an egg. In zoo. It wanted to eat it. Mm. It was funny. That I thought sense. it was so funny though, because it like how hard it flings its head down and makes that ball jump straight in there. And then I mean, it just animals like, feathers it throws its feathers out like it's so excited. <laughs> right. Animals do play. Like that's yeah. definitely a thing. I see my cat getting the zoomies all the time. Yeah, know? my cat. I raise my dog a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, um, the birds play as well. Um, yeah, my, exactly. My, my dad, when I was younger, he used to keep an aviary um, with with sort of it was a really large aviary Free. too, like one of those ones you can actually walk into. Free. That's cool. So, um, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. My story is just just a no, just an anecdote. You're, 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 what's your story? Uh... <laughs> We'll get to Hi, it. Everybody. We'll uh, get to it. I, I was just gonna say there were there were several species of giant hawks and owls native to the Caribbean islands Ooh, for, really? up until uh fairly recently. Like that they, they okay. were you know contemporary with like uh like into the into maybe like the time around the little ice age uh is when they really all when they got their final death death nail, but I don't know, it would be before that. Uh, so we it, didn't it, do it. That's good. Yeah, it was a bit, it, I, I don't know what the period would be called down there. It's called the late woodland period here up in up in North America. I don't know what it's called in in the Caribbean, though, but that's what we call it here uh, in North America. That period of time, there were giant hawks and owls because there, there were no large land predators, right? But there were right. large... Uh, there were, you know, rodents and things like that on the island. So the big birds of prey, same as is like when you talk about the that uh, New Zealand hawk that or New Zealand eagle, the hast eagle uh, that got so big it was the dominant predator in New Zealand. Uh, they they get big because they fill that large apex predator niche uh, on their in the, the little microbiome on this little isolated island, and they'll feed on the. Uh, there's there's also a trend towards like grazing birds and herbivore or reverse bird species that'll especially galliforms that'll turn flightless like giant into giant flightless bird which make birds which make perfect prey for for them as well yeah okay, there's, a, up now. <laughs> there's a bunch of them they look like pterodactyls almost i was gonna say it reminds me of that remember that um oh what's kent hovid's uh, little butt buddy um Matt Powell. Matt Powell, yeah. Ugh. Matt Powell with his picture when he was like, they found a pterodactyl in the U.S. <laughs> Remember, he was putting that Oh, and it's up. that, yeah, yeah, it's that deep fake with the uh, pterodactyl. Yeah. So well, funny. I mean, <laughs> the dinosaurs did go right on the boat, you know, and stuff with this. But, well, yeah. I like to just concede that dinosaurs live with live with man to them, and then and we live <laughs> and, and just leave. assume. <laughs> they just assume they're talking about birds. I'll be like, sure, sure, but dinosaurs live with man. Uh, 
Uh-huh. But I mean, they, they think that hey, there's Wild, how, how you doing? on the planet with us, and we, we lived and they didn't. How are you yeah. doing, mate? How are you feeling? Yeah, that's it. Cheers. Uh, I've not been following the conversation, so I'll... I'll well, it, yeah. it started off with the eclipse and why, um, you know, sort of people... Yeah, now we're, we're on birds, animals. animals in general. Um, but but oh. my dad raised birds um, in, mm-hmm. a, in an aviary, like one of the big ones, and um, he used to raise uh, pink and grey galahs and canaries and finches, and um, the, the most hilarious is quails. Because you'll never see them fly, but they'll suddenly be up at the top of this. You know, we're talking about a walk-in, like really massive aviary. So you'll find yeah, them quick. The like, how did you get up there? Like it's it's just incredible. They never let you see them fly. But apparently, birds that play are smarter than birds that don't. And I love this picture. I love the picture that they put there. That is just awesome. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they will lay but, in know. the grass and hold hands and stuff. It's so cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah birds are great. I was going to say, so when I had this parrot, I had an African gray, and I, it loved like Kung Fu films. She loved like Bruce Lee movies and stuff. Don't and, we like, all? Yeah, I would like poke at her and she'd make little Kung Fu noises and block my finger with her beak. She'd be like, psh, 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 you know, and then she'd like lift her wings up. She'd be like, wah. <laughs> But I like, I like walked into the, I heard her making Kung Fu sounds one day and she's like, wah, wah. And I walk into the living room and she's sitting there doing like kicks with her legs while she's making the sound. She's like sitting there practicing. It was so cute. Man. <laughs> They're so smart. Mark, did you see Titan, uh, Titan, but when did you find a video of a frigate bird in flight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I'm just be uh, careful I, I it up. with what videos you share because I get forget. I'll share like an animal video or something like, oh, look at this is what a Sirima looks like. I actually, had that happen. I was video the video one banging a, a, a toy lizard on a rock and I got a copyright strike for it. <laughs> I just what got a so one. Oh, god, I'm probably yeah. gonna get a copyright strike for that. Look That's, at this that parrot steel, humping right? at an David Attenborough in the forest. Oh. Actually, Copyright. one of the, the Dave and Attenborough things that was amazing was um, um, his the lyrebird in Australia. Like we're talking about mm-hmm. African greys are good at copying sounds. The lyrebird is something yeah. else. Entirely. It can mimic like, like car yeah. alarms and stuff. Yeah, it was mimicking a car alarm. It mimicked a chainsaw that it heard. So you just heard this. <laughs> and I'm yeah. like, what the hell? And it's like mimicking this chainsaw. I was like... And then when when he was taking pictures with the camera, it, it was mimicking the shutter. So you could just hear this camera going, and it's the bird. It's the bird. My, so my parent cool. loved to watch cops because she liked the siren sounds, and she would make the siren sounds when the sirens are going off. She'd be like, wee, wee, wee. I've known parrots that do that, that'll make, that'll yeah. make siren sounds, yeah. Or she barks like a dog. When, the, when someone pulls in the drive, she was a better uh, alarm dog, like, than my dogs were. She would bark when a car pulled up in the driveway. She'd be like, rawr, rawr, rawr. <laughs> it was my funny one. Just say shit all the time. She was so good at imitating <laughs> the other dogs. She would like bark like one of my dogs and then she would tell the dog to shut up. And then she would start laughing. <laughs> did the dogs pout when she did that too? Oh birthday? yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. They're like, they're like, you're torturing me. Why did... Why did Ryan bring this thing into our house? It's so <laughs> evil. <laughs> well, time... I mean, canids probably have to deal with that in the wild too, with ravens, Free. right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. One time, one time. So I had a little miniature Dotson, and when he was super naughty, I would put him in his kennel, right? And and same with the bird. When she's naughty, she goes in her cage, you know. So the the dog had gotten into the trash while I was gone, and I was like in. The bird was like, Carl, you're a bad dog. You're going in your cage. (laughs) What are you doing with that? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Okay, I'm just going to share this briefly. This is part of it. This is the the frigate bird. It's so weird. Look at the look at that big old uh, yeah inflated sack. It's like a ritual kind if, of thing. If, 
And if next I week, don't get him some bitches, I don't know what will. That's well, I'm, I look at the sack on that. It's just incredible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see how red it was? Look, well, it's no weirder than like, I mean, look, humans are weird. We see somebody like, you know, uh, have a nice watch or something. We're like, oh, shiny, that that person. Like, what are we doing? Like, seriously, what what the hell? It, it's it's really weird. It is weird. Like, well, I mean, even even anatomically, humans are like, wow, those are excellent glands for feeding infants. I'm just like so right. excited by that. It's it's like, what the hell? <laughs> okay, but it, 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 that's cultural too, because if you remove the stigma from it, like there's you know some indigenous cultures and stuff still around that sure. where there's that's not stigmatized, they just don't even think about it as something like that. So yeah, all cultural. Check out, <laughs> check out the birthing hips on that one birthing hips <laughs> sometimes i think it's interesting to see what other animals find attractive though there's like uh animals that, that there's uh animals that will collect like junk and show like yeah. birds that'll collect trash and show off their their sparkly uh foil and, and tin can collection to the uh, girls uh, and, uh, that's, that's, nice. called, that's called peacocking right Mm-hmm. Yeah, because peacock <laughs> no. were probably the worst example of like something really, really um, inefficient and unwieldy. You know, yeah. because those those feathers like they're just unwieldy and they don't really have any other purpose. I mean, if something grabs them, they might be able to like lose them, but they don't really. You know, can you imagine dragging that around your entire life because you've got to appeal to the opposite sex. It's crazy. They like to Isn't it like. Do peacocks do? I used to have a farmer that had had them, and when I would get, when I would come to the and go in the barn, they would like jump. They would get up on like right over the barn door and like on the roof, and so when I come out, they would scream. Oh, it sounds like they're screaming, "Get me out! Get me they out!" Would every day. <laughs> I mean, every time I got there, they. I mean, as soon as I would go in the barn, to, and then I would bring my samples out, they would be on top and they would scream just as I walked out. Just, to, I mean, I guess just to make me just put my hair stand up on the back of my neck, but but they would. He said they do that to you every day. They would like fly up there on top of the thing and just wait for me to come out so they could scream at me. Have you guys seen some of the crazy mating dances some of these uh, uh, tropical birds from like Indonesia yeah. and stuff do? Yeah, yeah. That, they see that, that like really weird good. fan up behind them yeah. and they do a little dance back and forth. They're like. Look at this! Look at me! Look at me! Look at me! And, and they, it's so cool because that's instinct. Like, you know, what I mean, the dance. Yeah. Uh, love it. it's, it's instinct. It, I would I love mean, to see it in the light spectrum that the birds do. It too. Yeah, yeah, that's I true, Bree. If we could see in the same in the same way that birds do, I bet it looks way different, huh? I bet well, it looks even more awesome. <laughs> Yeah, but I bet that humans going to a building to rump shake it like it looks pretty weird to a bird as well. Yeah, <laughs> bird ah. looking at us in the club like, what are these yeah. things doing? <laughs> or Why did you put all this <laughs> which, weird smells on you and everything? Which, yeah. <laughs> which is basically the same thing as a, a gathering of any other kind of primate below a tree dropping fermented fruit, right? We've been doing this mm -hmm. for hundreds of, or not hundreds, but... Right. Uh, Tens of millions of years. <laughs> I, I got to admit, though, that like what you're talking about with the amarula fruit in particular, um, that there's nothing that that makes me smile like a giraffe that has eaten amarula fruit and is drunk as a skunk, like just just oh, falling yeah. down drunk. A giraffe that's drunk and has mm. no motor coordination is actually hilarious. I don't know. Yeah, what the is. There's and, and, videos and, that's just. Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, elephants as well. They will yeah. see you know, yeah. like fermented, fermented fruit to, to yeah. get on top. Yeah, I feel yeah. like elephants are very uh, relatable for humans, maybe expressive-wise, right. expressiveness-wise, right? Yeah. Which yeah. is why I think elephants in captivity and Mork elephants is slavery. I mean, oh, absolutely, yeah. Brie. I agree with you 100%. Yeah. But I used to, you know, I've seen the way that they treat them, right? I, I have a mm -hmm. video I play pretty regularly just around oh, yeah. people that, hey, this is, this is how they this like, is, domesticate the elephants to do the work. They're like, they're like, look, we've got this elephant that draws pictures for tourists. It's like, oh. I watched that Blackfish the other day with the, about Awful. the orcas and stuff, and I cried through the whole movie. Yeah, orcas, I went to yeah, sea World. dolphins. I went, I went to SeaWorld when I was a teenager. It made me depressed. 
Yeah, yeah Tilligan, that Tilligan, that that boy, he was the, like the largest one. He was the breeder and stuff. It he was really abused bad by the people that first had him and then the feet the smaller orcas would abuse him too. They would scrape him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, humans exploit animals, definitely. Uh, I'm sure the domestic process of every species that we have in domestication was probably excruciating for just to some extent, except for the animals that like domesticated themselves, of course. Like dogs, like maybe. These, they had a, dogs might be they, the exception. Uh, well, yeah, I think equestrian uh, uh, evolution is is what I'm really thinking of because we really uh, we've really fucked up horses' bodies. Right? Oh yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, I used to raise horses as a kid. And, well, I, uh, I think it's a, yeah, a it's not good. in in the way our societies think, and because um, you know, I, I don't have a problem with these these zoos that do programs to save animals. Like for instance, you know, helping the pandas and things like that. They're endangered. They're probably going to go extinct. I, I really don't mind that. But sort of what you're talking about, most of the problems are caused when we commercialize these things. So when there's money involved in these orcas, that's when bad start things start to happen. And so I, I think there's a there's a you know I mean I I hate to get deep. You know what I'm like, everybody. There's a flaw in our system of capitalism here, and it seems to be more and more prominent as as we go along. That we can't we we can't commercialize certain things. We just can't. And sort of the biome and environment and uh, the biosphere has to be one of those things, right? Mm -hmm. We've had we've like the the um, thoroughbreds this year, in Kentucky. You know we're the Kentucky Derby oh, and, right, um, right. and the thoroughbreds, you know, they, they're bred, they have really small uh, angles and, you know, very thin legs. And, and um, there's been like, I think like nine of them that have died this year. It's and awful. It's, it's, yeah. you know, it's been really bad on them. And, that, and then, of course, should, yeah. and that's then why I don't. That. And they banned That's the why dog races in Florida. They got yeah. rid of the, the, the greyhounds, mm -hmm. and they put all, but they put all of them to smoke, a bunch of them to sleep because they couldn't find anybody to take them. I mean, yeah. I remember in what it was at the late '90s, early 2000s, when they started banning all the dog racing stuff. Some states still have it. I think Arkansas yeah. or one of them Ugh. has it or something. But uh, Florida My state it. still has dog racing, like it has the greyhounds, and I'm really opposed to it. I think it's awful. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, well, they, it's they, awful. They're, 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 there are they're, ways to treat uh, them. Uh, there are ways to sport with your dog that don't, that don't involve abuse. You can yeah, enjoy, I like, play like I play frisbee with my dogs, and they yeah. love it. Yeah, you I can think, you can take your dog on a five k if you want to. You yeah, know, if you yeah. if, if you wanted to be involved in comp competitive sports with you, that's something you can do. Or yeah, I think the ground the greyhounds they they like did a lot of stuff to them to make them you know to to like <laughs> run make them yeah. run and then they would um and and then they were they just didn't take care you know what I mean they would in, run them injured and stuff like that. Well, once they're once they're the problem with the the racing stuff is they just breed them to race, and then once they're done yeah. racing, they just discard them, right? There's yeah. a powerful Simpsons episode about that. Yep, there is a Christmas yep. episode. That's Christmas how they get their dog. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Um, uh, Santa's, Santa's a little helper. helper. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's a good app. That's like early see early seasons. Man, that's a good episode. We're yeah, that's when they really now. had something to say, you know, like that's early days Simpsons. I, I there was hard think, there. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and the one where they all thought the apocalypse was gonna happen. Um, you know, the the angel that they found that turned out to be, you know, a yeah. fake that somebody buried. You know, they they had a lot to say instead of just you know, Americans dumb, basically. You know, I, I, I think that I don't know. I, I kind of feel like Simpsons lost its way, and Matt Groening he wanted to wind it up and concentrate on Futurama, which I, I think was uh, well. Um, Futurama has that heart too. Let's not forget yeah, Jurassic Park, yeah, which is a, which is a 
Jurassic Bark was kind of a low blow, though, because you could sit down to an yeah. episode of Futurama expecting, hey, I want some good good old cartoon comedy here with robots and spaceships and aliens. Yeah, that took and a you get right a... turn into the fist, right. didn't it? Yeah, and it took a hard <laughs> right into emotional damage, I'm like. Some, suddenly oh, I'm bawling. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And Connie uh -huh. Francis is singing. <laughs> emotional damage. Emotional damage. Sorry, my bad. Um, I've, I've been wanting to use that for ages, and it's just an excuse. But um, I, I, there were some episodes of um, Adventure Time that used to be like that. Mm, they were yeah. you know, all silly and wacky and all the kind of thing. And then it would take a hard right into when, just, oh, uh, no. When Finn used... starts exploring his his uh, his history and who, where he comes from and stuff, those episodes, the ones that kind of have that overarching yeah. him discovering his origins, those well, episodes are powerful. Thinking about the origins of the Ice King and Marcelino. Oh, like yeah, that's and, bad too. Like, like I was watching that episode where they're playing music, and I just went, "Oh, oh no, this is this is you know, oh no, this just turned like this was a, a wacky episode that just had a hard right into my feels. What happened? Yeah, I guess I was thinking shit. about the ones where. Finn was meeting, was finding his mom. Uh, yeah, who, yeah. We thought it was his mom. I don't know if they ever confirmed that she truly was or not. Um, when, when the Simpsons first came out, my parents wouldn't let me watch it. Oh, wow. were you re were you in a religious household? Oh yes, yes. Okay. Uh, but you had your that representation changed. on there. Would you? Would they let you watch the Flanders? No. Oh, the Flanders. No, you're Flanders. funny, though. <laughs> He's like, Stupid, how do you do, Lee, Mr. Neighbor? Do you do? <laughs> yeah. Could it's you like imagine I'm wearing like... nothing at all. <laughs> nothing at all. Nothing. <laughs> so sexual. Homer has some, some fucking under, underlying sexual... Oh, uh, yeah. Homo homosexual yeah. thing with, with Flanders, too. Obviously. Yeah. It's there. Yep. Yep. I think I think that uh, in another universe, there's that uh, Flanders and Homer are the couple, and uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Actually, I would Flanders watch the shit Henry, out of that too. He'll who renounces religion to become a gay man. <laughs> yeah. he could it he could be fun. a Unitarian preacher. Mm. Mm. Oh, right, right. Turn Even better. Feels. The 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 <laughs> show that got me with the right turn into feels was Scrubs. Um, ah, scrubs, yeah, huh? like if anyone oh, saw, no. who was it? Brandon, Brandon, what was his name? Um, That's a pretty good show when guy. it came out. Oh, Brandon Fraser. Um, Brandon Fraser did an appearance, and if it's... you've seen those episodes, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about for a comedy show to make a hard right into feels. It was, it, yeah, absolutely destroyed me when I watched it. See... This is the type of rumor I would spread about my like coworker. I'd be like, my, you know, Jason, he lo really loves Brandon Fraser. So for when we have the Christmas like holiday exchange, get him a Brandon Fraser pillow. He'll love it. <laughs> oh man, I tell you what, uh, <laughs> that movie Brandon Fraser did just not too long ago. That the whale. The whale. That, yeah. Yeah. That that that. I never saw that one. Me. That hurts. Yeah. Yeah. What's it on? Is it streaming on it's, anything? It's it's a movie, but uh, I, I, I saw, it, saw it on Prime, I think. Okay, all right. What's up, Jimmy Tux? Hey, good uh, good evening. Good hey, afternoon Jimmy, to Australia. Yeah. Hey, Jimmy. Aussie, I think was, there was the movie you're talking about, something named Monster with Brandon Fraser? No, it was The Whale. Oh, the, the whale. It's a, he, where he, he plays the uh, overweight character. Of course, yeah. his oh. character in... Uh, his character in Doom Patrol had a good oh. tragic origin story too. Yeah. I love, I love, the, I love um, him in Doom Patrol. He's so good in that. The <laughs> robot guy, right? That was the, yeah. Yeah. the racer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That shows that that was probably one of the better comic book to film 
like shows I've ever seen. It's definitely the, the best, the best DC, uh, right? Uh, there you go. Uh, series that I that I or uh, live action series I can think of. Of course, the best DC series is that Batman the animated series, and I'll fight all of you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can't understand why DC can't make a decent movie for for uh, to save their life. Yet they make the most awesome animated series and and movies and shows. Um, yeah, Justice League War was an amazing movie, all animated, and it was fantastic. And they can just produce these, and and they can't do a a, a decent movie. It, it it drives me crazy. You don't like Suicide Squad? Um, I mean, yes, I did actually. I liked. Okay. Um, the second I one, I would cut good, Jerry right? Leto out of Suicide Squad, but yes, other than absolutely. that, it's good. Well, there, there's been <laughs> yeah, two of them, really. I think I think the second one was better. I liked the second one. I, I, I really yeah. did. I thought yeah. it really had heart. You know the the um, rat catcher, the polka dot guy, all of it had so much heart, and yeah. I liked that. I really liked that. Yeah. I'm on board with that. Yeah, they had like like tragic origin stories, which always makes uh, exactly. And and I like it when they're not the cliche uh, dead parents tragic origin stories too, but when there's some something more to it, because mm -hmm. that's just overdone in comics. Uncle Ben and uh, uh, yeah. the 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 Waynes and yeah, you know, mm. with Thomas Wayne and yeah, <laughs> just uh, it, it, give me something something different than this this generic story for the origin of the characters. And they did that with the polka dot guy. I was like, holy crap! Yeah. The polka dot guy has a better origin story than Batman. <laughs> yeah, he was completely abused. Absolutely, mm -hmm. just just a broken guy. Yeah, but you know, I, I think did you watch the Titans kind of at all? Yes. I Did thought it like wasn't it? bad. It, it yeah, wasn't it's not bad. Terrible. It wasn't that great. I think that um, it's just so. My wife and I watched it, and we found that um, the the birds, um, Dove and Hawk, were just so boring. Like they were just boring. Like there was nothing. That, that, they just argued and had this drama, and it's like, eh, they're just felt like boring. the story just kind of like lost the plot somewhere. Yeah. And you I know like, what I mean? I wasn't sold on um, um, the girl at the start, Raven at the start, but yeah. she kind of threw on me. You know, she, I think they yeah. did a good job by the end of it. I think that maybe she was a bit young. She had to get into the, you know, how the character worked. I wasn't sold on um, Starfire that much either, but she threw on me as well. She was okay, but I wouldn't call it amazing. It was okay. I... You know, it not was as good as Doom Patrol. That's for a damn sure. Huh? Oh, absolutely not as good as Doom Patrol. Absolutely. I wish they, you know, I if if Marvel or if DC can keep producing things like Doom Patrol, <coughs> I would, I would, I would be like, yeah, I'm a DC fan all the way. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and and I hated Beast Boy. I really hated that character. Just. Because he, he went, oh, well, I can turn into a tiger. No, that Beast Boy can turn into any animal. That's the whole point, right? That's, that's I didn't like him uh, either. Yeah, I do. shallow. Didn't. Was shallow, this a live very action? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen yeah, it's that. On it's on HBO. It's on HBO now. Mm -hmm, and Beast Boy mm -hmm. can only turn into a tiger. Right. No, he can turn into other he can turn into other animals. But oh, he not, just doesn't. Not, not in, in um Titans, he doesn't. He doesn't turn into anything else. He turns into a snake, doesn't he? Yeah, but it's, uh, does he? I don't think he really. Yeah, he does. But he, he does doesn't change really remember it, and he doesn't. He it's can't stupid. Do it again. It's stupid. Yeah, it, the way they built that character was really dumb. I agree. Because the whole like, point of like when you saw the animated series and stuff, the way that he fought was kind of you know he'd turn into a hummingbird and dodge out of the way, then you know fly above someone and turn into an elephant and then just boom you know <laughs> it was really cool what he could see do. that would have been awesome if they would have done that right <laughs> yeah they 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 should have had the same dude that did uh doom patrol do titans because that's where they messed up right right i mean they I really leaned into the wackiness of doom patrol everybody i know but so that was that's what I agree. But there was I, a I, there I, was I, a grit to it too, though. I yeah. really liked. Um, there was a theme. 
there was a, a, a dark, a dark, a, sort of a dark edge, right? Mm -hmm. Um, where it, there was there there were there were zany characters, but the stakes were still they still seemed mm -hmm. high. It did, uh, which they did really good with Dead the Deadpool movies too, which was you know making a yeah. zany movie. But okay, this, those movies are good. Yeah, yeah, the Deadpool let's... films are fucking hilarious. And I that think that's what they Anna... tried to do with She Hulk. And I didn't. What's, I, the, I, what's his girlfriend's name? I have to forget the actress. She came into my restaurant a few years back, and I was like, oh. oh. I was like, oh, my uh, my crush is here. And the server <laughs> came over. I was like, go away. I got her. Because <laughs> I, mean, I, I worked I, in an I open kitchen. Loved, I absolutely loved Crazy Jane. I, I loved that character. Yeah, like, she's just a babe. The, well, just. Yeah, the, she was the, my favorite character on there. Too, yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah. And then Brandon like, Frazier next. <laughs> it's really hard to play sort of a character with sort of multiple personalities or DID or something like that, right? And and another film where, that was done really well was that um, um, Split, right? The, the um, what's his name? Um, Maca, McAvoy played um, the person with split personalities kind of thing. Um, it's really hard to do, but I think I've seen that one yet. Well. But yes, the it's that, really no, good, I have actually. not yet. Split I, I uh, I'm go, the I'll go watch Shyamalan. That. Yes, I'm putting that on my list yeah. to watch. I'll watch that in the next oh, couple of days. Yeah, there's uh, there's Glass too to watch with that. So. Oh yeah, yeah, I saw that too. I, I didn't to watch see that Glass. As well. I, I didn't see Glass. I didn't yeah. see anyone. I only saw Split, but I really did enjoy it. I thought like McAvoy hoisted that movie and carried it so hard. Like I, I don't know. It would have been terrible if it hadn't he hadn't pulled off that that character, um, but he did. So, I I liked it. So, what's your favorite adapt adaptation from like comic to film? V for Vendetta. Okay. I love that movie. That movie is amazing. Have you seen V for Vendetta? Yeah, I have. Uh, yeah. no. With you've never oh, seen it. Right? You have to. Free. Uh, you're gonna love that. It's it's a, it. a revolutionary, like a isn't yeah, it mon a yeah. monarchist propaganda though. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. It's no. it's sort of um, it's it's kind of a lot of people go, oh, this is a little bit too much like real life because it sort of suggests that a fascistic government gets into control. So fascism is basically what they're they're rebelling against. Um, yeah. but it was done by the Wachowski sisters and they, mm. um, they have a the lot matrix, of their, yeah. right. And there are a lot of their themes and a lot of the things that they do in this movie is this whole idea of, do you want a hard truth or an easy lie? It was you know, very you, much a prediction of what we're living in now. That a lot of people say that a, a lot of people say that, and I'm like, yeah, I see it, but, um, I don't know. I would like to believe that it wouldn't get to that point because people wouldn't allow it. Like I would like to think that people You'd like aren't to think like that, but remember, stupid. remember, uh, yeah, the Wall Street yeah. protest. Remember that thing that happened about <laughs> ten years ago. You know, mm -hmm. remember uh, how no one's ever thought of it since then and mentioned it or doesn't talk about it, and yeah, you know, nothing ever happened. Yeah, but like a, what happened like a, was. What happened when people started protesting is the police cracked down like we were maniacs is what they did i don't know if you guys remember remember like 10 years ago if you go you can go look at videos and shit and there's like people getting maced and shit for no reason they're just sitting there you know mm. there's all sorts of like i, I it's it's mm. seem, it's weird to me because it feels like it's just 10 years ago and people don't have remember permit. occupy wall street you have to have a permit to protest in most places. And if you don't yeah, get Occupy it, Wall Street? Do you remember when that happened in like Seattle and stuff? Yeah, but if you don't get a permit to protest, then you're you're breaking the law. Then you can just get it. no, 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 no. That's not that's not that's not true. That's not actually it's true. It is true. You have to get a permit no, it isn't. Just to protest. Mm -hmm. No, you don't. No, you it don't. depends on what you two are talking about, but yes, you do have to get a permit. For a Why protest. are you saying no when I know this is true? <laughs> yeah, but 
but there is a, a way of doing a public a public protest uh, as long as you're not obstructing a sidewalk. Exactly, Jim. Yeah. I mean, so like I, I, I protest yeah. all the time in Bowling Green. We have to get a permit. We have to get a permit in Bowling Green. We have to get a permit in Lexington. We have to get a permit so, in Washington DC. So the the law is, and I'm reading the ACLU. LU, um, you don't need a permit to march in the streets or on sidewalks as long as you don't obstruct car or pedestrian traffic. If you don't have a permit, police officers can ask you to move to the side of a street or sidewalk to let others pass for safety reasons. Yeah. Um, certain types of events may require permits. These include a march or parade that requires blocking traffic or street closure, a large rally requir requiring the use of sound amplifying devices, or a rally over a certain size at most parks and plazas. Um, while certain permit procedures require submitting an application well in advance of the planned events, police can't use those procedures to prevent a protest in response to breaking news events. Restrictions on the route of a march or sound equipment may violate the First Amendment if they are ne unnecessary for traffic control or public safety, or if they interfere right. significantly with effective so, communication. So the excuse they used was, hey, you're impeding traffic, you've blocked, there's too many people here. But it's basically half the fucking city showed up downtown in Seattle. And, you know, so they cracked down, they brought out. But well, know, did they have a permit or not? No, no, there was like half there was like half a million people out there. What are they gonna do? You, can well, you get a permit for half a million mason, people? Probably. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. They started macing yeah. people, fire hosing them. It was awful. Batoning well, them. Why didn't they just get a permit? Like they can't refuse a no, permit. No, no, no. They can't because the city would not give them one for that many people. It was very much a grass roots movement too that just it right. happened. It was just a big protest that happened all of a sudden. We were like, no, hey. Uh, screw the one percent. We're the ninety nine percent. Screw the one percent. That was the idea, right? Yeah. And it kind of backfired, really. The whole protest backfired. It lasted. Oh man, it lasted like two weeks. It was. It was a long protest. And it was like a national, it was like throughout the whole US too, but mainly in Seattle. Yeah, no, I, I, I hear you. It's just, yeah. Um, so I, I don't, I don't know um, what, what the laws are, but it sounds like there is a law that if you're to assemble over a certain size, you need a mm -hmm. permit there. So um, it, it's kind of, you know, no, I, I'm not the saying point, the whole point of their protest. No, blaster was, master, blaster yeah, master, just yeah, let me yeah, finish. Yeah. I'm not saying it's right, but it's not really surprising that they maced people because if they told them to move and they well, don't they move, they schools with then, batons and stuff, dude. It was yeah, and I'm not that. saying that's right. It's just you know, if they told them to move and they didn't, they'd then be breaking the law. So your average police officer isn't going to stand up to their boss and go, well, yeah, they're breaking the law, but let's just let them do it. So you know, they're not going to do the that. Whole, Trump, Trump the whole point of the Occupy Wall Street bullets. thing was to disrupt the norm. <laughs> that was the whole point. Yes. <laughs> you remember that? Trump fought, shot the peaceful protesters there. Yeah. That's when he got his upside-down Bible picture. Yeah. yeah. He had him shooting with rubber bullets. Yeah, and then the church uh, that he, he postured in front of to, to sort of nailed um, the Bible. He's that. such a grifter. Yeah. But the, the church that it was in front of denounced him for that because, you know, they yeah, didn't of want to be they associated did. with this guy. Yeah, well, I mean. Yeah, they were peaceful. They, were, they weren't even, there wasn't, they, they, were, they were peaceful protesters. They weren't even rioting. But did they try for a permit and were denied? Can, do, do we know that for the sure? The Occupy, like, Wall Street people? Yeah. I don't know. You could look. <laughs> they, I'm sure someone probably did apply for one. But, I mean, it was pretty spontaneous. It just kind of happened out of nowhere. Yeah, I... Yeah, I don't... I don't think that they did to be honest with you and i, I get what you're saying no, I, I think that was the whole point it, no i i get that it's just you know i i just yeah well, I, I don't know okay let's say let's say you know fifty thousand people show up to a, a protest and they were like hey we're showing up on this date 
We're going to be here. Yeah. Expect us. Yeah. So do you roll in there with tanks? Well, no. Well, I mean, the people doing... Hold, hold I mean, that's the what they did. Should, well, the people holding the protest should alert the government. That's what they're doing. They, it was it was peaceful until the cops started doing shit. Uh, yeah. It was. I mean, apparently there was a few thefts and stuff. But yeah, no, I, I believe mm. you. I believe you. It's just... So, so what I'm looking at is that some of these protests cause a lot of um, a lot of problems for other people, right? Like when the environmental people go and block traffic, kind of thing. Yeah. And I get that it's an important thing. And don't get me wrong, I'm in support of their cause. I'm just not sure that inconveniencing a whole lot of people is really a good way about going about it. Because well, the government is there to sort of protect the rights of you're everybody. You're talking about fighting the top percentage of people. So the people with yes. the most the the most wealth. Yes. How there's no way to there you think that they're not they don't have control of the police? Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean I think they do. It's just, you know, when you're doing yeah, a so project, it's a it tail may, heads you win heads I win, tails you lose situation. So we can't. We don't really have a choice but to do what, but protest well, peacefully. The government has control of the police, and you might argue how much you know special interests and and PACs have control of the government. But it's not like they're giving the police orders directly. Um. Well, I mean, the the generally like the politicians, the police. Whoever's in charge, whoever elect, whoever is the who is in official. charge, Blaster Master. Who is in charge? I don't know who is in charge. Right. Like in, no in that situation, you. well, I think they called in like Homeland Security in that situation, and that and they took over. Is what happened. The National Guard showed up. Homeland Security was there, and they went to town on the protesters. Yeah, which I don't think is right. I think that's that's you know absolutely horrible. Yeah, it was. It was awful. What happened? Well, the way that the state handled that was very poor. Jimmy, you agree with me? I, I, I vaguely remember some of the stuff. There was a combination of vagrants and um, everybody was pissed off because the only, uh, the only crime that was really going on was the uh if i'm talking about the same thing was that uh, wall street got away with pretty much robbing america blind yes. and nobody was going to jail nobody was getting prosecuted yeah. etc cool. etc and pretty much crashed the economy and the bankers all made out like bandits why is gene hackman trending I don't know, Jimmy, I'd come in that room where you were today and I couldn't stay. I, I no, don't... no problem. It's... So, that, that, that was... Gene Hackman has died at 94. Oh. And it... According to the Twitters. We'll miss you, Lex Luthor. Actually, I was called Lex Luthor the other day. It was funny. Yeah, uh, there Who's was a, Superman. Then are you? Are yeah, you I think Brian? Know. There was an actor called know, Brian was, Anderson, and I would get, I would get asked if I was him quite often living in Chicago. I'm Robin. Who are Robin? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I have I have a Robin costume. I because I sent I sent my ex one time to get me a Robin Hood costume. I wanted a Robin Hood. And I told him to get me one. And he brought back this shiny looking dress thing. And I said, what is this? And he said, Robin. I said, Robin wow. Hood is like, you know. Well, American that was a failure to listen right there. While yeah, we so don't I actually have genuine superhero names, Blaster, myself, and Wildheart all do have the uh, the names <laughs> of a inner city super or inner city gang that crime fighters regularly. Right. right. <laughs> I had to run around team up. Jeepers Batman all night. That's what I had to do. Run Jeepers Batman. Although Mark Lex Luthor is a complicated character too, though. You're talking Absolutely. about. Absolutely. I thought they did him so dirty in um, Batman versus Superman. 
they did him so dirty. What's yeah. his name? The, the Facebook oh. guy, um, oh. play, guy that played Zuckerberg. He was terrible as Lex Luthor. Like, terrible. That guy. is my. Yeah. That movie made me cry because it was so awful. Because Ben Affleck is the worst Batman in the history of Batman uh, I, ever. No, I I disagree. I disagree. Um, he's, he's terrible as Bruce Wayne. Okay, he's terrible as okay. Bruce Wayne. Okay, he's, he's good as Batman. Like all of the fight scenes and stuff, they were really good. Right, I I liked them. Oh. He's terrible at Bruce Wayne. That's what he's terrible at. Oh. I like Butler. What's his name? I just could oh. not take him seriously as Batman. It was just Alfred. Me. Alfred. Yeah. yeah, the guy that played Alfred, which is um, Jeremy Irons, I believe it was. Yeah. Well, I remember was... the show, not the movie. The, the show. You know. What was, was Ben Aff Affleck's breakout film? Does anyone know here? Um, probably um, that Ball one. Rats? Damon. No. no, yeah, yeah, it was it was, it was Mall, Mall Rats, Rats before Mall Rats. You were Good close, Bumblebee. Goodwill Hunting. No, you were close, Bumblebee. It was <laughs> it was the one before Mall Rats. Uh, that would be Clerk. No, Clerk. Was it Clerk? Yeah. Yes. yes, that was his breakout film. I, I'm going to retract that uh, he died. I think this is a fake. That's why I Twitter's been fake. Seriously. All right, let's take back. A and as Batman, because I was like, <laughs> I just remember from Clerks, and I'm like, he's just the like player in Clerks that you know. <laughs> no, it's that's like didn't appear in the original Clerks. He's been a picture in uh, his films ever since. Um, um, he's in Clerks. Kevin Smith's films ever since, but he wasn't in Clerks. Yeah, he was. Mm. No, he wasn't. What? Who did he play in Clerks? Maybe he played. Oh, he's in Clerks three. Uh huh. I thought he was in Clerks. Maybe you're right. Oh. It was oh. uh the other actor. Um, you're right. You're right. I confused the two actors. No, I think it's, what would it be his breakout be then? No, what was this breakout? It was... Uh, where's Bob? No, I want to know too. I don't. I just don't. I can't take him very seriously as an actor. He's always been like awful to me for some reason. Uh, I think it was Goodwill Hunting. I really do. It may have been good. Well, what about he was a he wasn't Buffy the Vampire Slayer the movie, not the show. He like wasn't Mall Rats. Movie. Maybe it was. Well, apparently no, he was in Clerks. He is confused. in Clerks. He is in Clerks. He is in Clerks. He is. He works really? in the video what? store. He's worse in the video store. Ben Affleck is gawking guy. He's the gawking guy in Clerks. Yeah, but that wasn't his breakout role. Yeah, that was his first role in a big film that made money. What year was that? 94. 98. Four. 94. Yeah. Okay. Well, he was like, no, he okay, was no, in like Field of Dreams. He was uh, like a background oh. kid. Oh, he was? Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, a background like an extra. Or... Like an extra. But like that wouldn't be a breakout role. The first movie I remember seeing, like the, 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 <laughs> the oldest movie that I yeah, remember right. like watching and seeing, and seeing, hey, that's Ben Affleck. That's like Ben Affleck when he was a teenager was Buffy the Vampire Slayer, where he's yes, like he was in Buffy. He was actually Ugh. high school aged at that time. He was kind of like really skinny back then, so he looks he looks like a. See, I never lanky. watched Buffy, so I wouldn't know. What well, wasn't it? Wasn't was the show? Great. It was the it was the movie. The, well, movie, the show's yeah. better than the movie, definitely. Yeah, the show was. I did watch. I mean, I have seen the movie and I have watched a few episodes. The show was better than the movie. I will say that, yes. Yeah, I, I love the show. I mean, it, it yeah, it was, it was fantastic. Back in the day, you didn't have a choice. You just watched whatever, whatever was on TV. Right. Uh, I don't think so. It was I mean, in something. Was, yeah. He was in something called School Ties that was fronted by Brendan Fraser. Oh, yeah, and Matt with Matt Damon, Chris O'Donnell, and that was in '92, same year he did Buffy. 
He is actually uh, from Pennsylvania, so his his Jersey boy he's, thing. <laughs> I think he's probably one of my least favorite actors. Probably, yeah. It's like I don't know. Maybe that's why that's why that movie just like the Superman versus Batman movie was just like I was so mad. Uh, but just... Eisenberg was 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 it, is it Eisenberg? I think it is. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, jo- Josie Eisenberg. Mm-hmm. He is t- like he's trying to do. Um, um, Heath Ledger's Joker as yeah. Max Luthor. He's trying yeah. so desperately to channel somebody who's so far out of his league, um, and it just well, it doesn't fit the character. It doesn't because because Lex Luthor, for a start, was really confident and powerful, and sort of he didn't have a lot to say. He wouldn't like joke around. He was so serious, you know, like he was a serious contender, and. Um, you know, the, the whole point was that Lex Luthor wanted to protect the Earth. He didn't really want to destroy it. He just thought that Superman was a danger to the Earth, and he's sort of a bit of a narcissist. But, um, like, there's there's been comics where Superman and Lex Luthor have teamed up because there's, like, aliens threatening the Earth. And Lex Luthor, while he's sort of a criminal, he also believes in the super- superiority of humanity kind of thing. Like... You know, he's a very complex character. Very complex. Do you know, uh, like, Daredevil? Have you guys seen that show? I have. Yes. Yeah. Good show. Yeah, the actor that plays not, Kingpin. Not, not the movie. Not the movie. With no, no, the show. Yeah, no. The, the like, That's Marvel terrible. show. That uh, shit is pretty good. Yeah, yeah Kingpin uh, is I, good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he, he's amazing. I, did he get that his own show? Amazing. Yeah, he's so good. The, yeah. He's an echo. Right, I haven't watched Echo yet because I'm behind on a lot of stuff. Yeah, but... he's in that. Yep. I did he's... love Jessica Jones actually. I thought that that. Was yeah, amazing. Jessica Jones was good too. I and, like and those... the villain in the first season, David Tennant. He is so good as mm. a villain in the first season. Like, oh, mm, the purple Justice. man. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Er, I was Doctor just watching Who. an old episode of uh, of X Men from Fox Kids the other night, and it, it was he was the villain in the episode. Doctor Who has has not been the same since he left i agree yeah. My yeah 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 david Tennant is yeah the best doctor he's going back to play the doctor i think he's Hell he's the yeah. next doctor or something it's just like oh, yes. okay that's weird oh. but sure they bring so him who back was, i'll be so happy who was the worst uh or sorry the best batman in your opinion i know you just answered the worst but the best um, batman. Ooh, that's a tough one mm. that is a tough one yeah, that is a tough one. I mean, I did like um, Bale's uh, for his depiction of kind of Bruce Wayne, but I don't think he was the best Batman kind of thing. I, I don't know. That's a hard one. That's a really hard one. Keaton has a lot of nostalgia in yeah. my heart. Yeah, I would yeah. say it's yeah. between Michael Keaton and Adam West for me. <laughs> yeah. I'm not old enough to have a connection with Adam, but Adam West <laughs> like that. Yes. So hey, Adam West was awful, like as an actor. No, he, he's, he's just. He's, yeah. he's I just love him though. <laughs> he's I don't so care. Canny. If you've never seen some some people that did um sort of movie graphics updated um Adam West into the you know the Batman that that is the new one and they updated it with with Adam West and it is. It's so good. It is oh, so man. good. Like they replaced the, the Batmobile with the old one with the red lines down it and stuff. And it is just, <laughs> it's I, I mean, good. I, I grew up watching the old school Batman TV show, you know, when yes. I was a kid. So yes. Adam West has a, has a place in my heart that will never leave, you know. I'm such a millennial. <laughs> I am I am literally yeah. viscerally offended by yeah. Adam West's Batman. I feel like that that <laughs> depiction of of uh superheroes on TV held uh held back the actual uh potential oh, of superhero yeah. television on superheroes on television. Oh, so they were so good though, Bree. They they would be like pow. And pop, yeah, that, that cheesy like, stuff like yeah, that. At least yeah, until, yeah. until we got what night we got Night Rider and then the Incredible Hulk. That's the first TV shows. Yeah. The oh TV yeah, shows I think did. That was my other favorite right. TV show yeah. as a kid. Incredible Hulk, Bruce Banner, yeah. man. Yeah, that was bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think the best 
I think the best joker was Heath Ledger. I think he did something that was just insane. Oh, yeah. I, I think I Jared to Leto tried that. to channel him. Everybody tried to do what he was doing, and, uh, yeah, none of it. None of it. Joaquin it. Phoenix did it best, though, as, yeah. as far as trying to channel the... Yeah. That's, that's a hard stat. I, 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 okay. I yeah. prefer Heath Ledger slightly, okay. just slightly. I think he was better. Um, oh, I was I think, just saying Joaquin Phoenix was the best at channeling a little bit of, the, of what Ledger... Isn't Joker 2 oh, coming yeah, out? Yeah, okay. Absolutely. Yeah. But I think that there was something about the amount of menace that, that Heath Ledger could produce. Like, apparently, Michael Caine, who played Alfred in it, he came out of uh, the elevator and he said, I was actually scared at this guy being on set. Like, he just, apparently, the amount of evil menace that he could put out around him, he actually made other cast members scared of him. <laughs> like, he actually made them think he was insane. Um, now that is acting like if you're actually yeah. making if you're a villain and you're making everyone else on set is scared of you right <laughs> like that is incredible um i mean so, yeah, okay I, jack I, nicholson was also a good a good joker yes uh look full disclosure also that that heath ledger came from my state so i do have to have to say that yeah, fair um, enough uh yeah. confirming your bias i see how <laughs> That's fair. No, it's, and the fact that he has that, that he was doing a, a doing a foreign accent the whole time, a foreign accent to him, at least yeah. you know the whole time while he was he was depicting that the best live action depiction of the character is is even more amazing because there are people. Yeah, Jack Nicholson is. Uh, someone just mentioned Jack Nicholson in the side chat. Was a you know he he had his own. Uh, I mentioned Here, him. portrayal of the character, yeah. and he was like the killing joke. Joker is kind of what he was playing, I think. Yeah. So, uh, which is a very specific uh, uh, depiction of the characters in his mannerisms and stuff, which is unique to that. Well, we're well and truly off topic, and have been for quite some time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We started talking and about comic books. books. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but I think I might wind it up because I, I was looking to go for about two hours anyway. But um, I, I want to thank you all so much for coming in here. I've really mm. enjoyed the chat, uh, even though, you know, we covered the eclipse. But that really, obviously, the world didn't end with the eclipse. And I don't think it's ending anytime soon. I don't see any reason. But um, uh, I've seen yeah. two predictions, two updates on the predictions. Nice. Um, uh, it's, it's now planned for the 23rd of April from one organization and another one, um, Hamet Meta, um, uh, has put a posting from somebody who's predicting that uh, there's another form of the same crisscrossing of the last three or four or five. He's spelled out a word, and we're right on track, folks. It's the end of the very end of the end of the end times. I can't wait. So all the Christians go. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Judgment Day is upon us, finally. All us atheists mm, will sure. finally I'm get sure. our comeuppance. Okay, well, Robert, you're interested. I want comeuppance. <laughs> Speak me first, Daddy. Oh, my. Do you what if I... Um, did you want to give like sort of a final outro? And I might link your channel as well, while, if, if you Thank do you. want to do that. Um, I, I did put out some videos to that, uh, today. I did um, I did uh, Senator Whitehouse's speeches on the Supreme Court, the scheme, mm -hmm. and so uh, like each each one, I'm going to do like two speeches. I sped them up, and because I kind of everybody here in America needs to learn about what he they're doing to our court. Um. So that's that's the only thing I've got going on right now, and and I'll be getting to interview on KA. We get we're, we have Mil Matt Dillhunty coming on. Awesome! Mm -hmm. oh, cool. You got Arn, Arn and, and, and Arn too. Yes. Also, cool. and I used a meme from Robin today on my show. Oh, good! I love the, memes. The one that you posted <laughs> about uh, how you when once you see the illusion. Oh, yeah. Explained. You can't unsee it. That's an yeah. excellent one. 
Mm. Yeah, I like those. Um, yeah, I like those like that. Mark said, Mark Stoney said, what's the illusion? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> he's never seen a, that's been, that's been my thing since ever since I became, once, once you see the absurdity of God, you can't unsee it. That's what, that's why yeah. I've since I've. All you can do is pretend. It's true. All right, fantastic. Thank you so much, Robin. Um, Blaster Master, do you want to say something? Yeah. Um, wind up. It's not the it's not the end of times. There's never been an end of times. That's not happening anytime soon, unless you know something weird happens, like we all decide to nuke each other or something. But that's not happening. Hopefully. Um. I don't know. You know, I get frustrated by religious people because you would think what, what I think we need to do is hold their feet to the fire when they claim the end of the world is coming. Be like, hey, are you going to denounce your religion if this isn't true? Otherwise, stop claiming stuff, you know? Stop making predictions that aren't going to come true and you're not you're you know they're not going to come true just so you can grift off of it. Fair That's enough. All. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Um, Wildheart, did you want to wrap up with your final few words? Uh, yeah, no, uh, just thanks for having me on. It's always great to see you. And Bree as well. Uh, I've not seen you for a while. It is hey, yeah. <laughs> You've been quiet. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's okay. Uh, thanks for hanging it's out. I really appreciate well, huh? it, brother. Yeah, it is good to see you. I hope you're doing really well. <laughs> um, Bumble Green, Bumble Greenus. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yep, that's me. Um, well, I mean, if I'm gonna plug something, I guess it's uh, would be the oh, tree yeah, of positions. Uh, oh, your middle link then? Yeah, if you would. Okay. You just continue. Sorry, I'll find it. I'll find yeah, because uh, that that that's a show I have will we'll have coming up before my life in the hive show on Saturday, on Saturday, Thursday night. We do at seven p.m. We do the transpositions. It's a weekly show where we just do updated news on uh, uh, topics impacting the transgender community. So if that's something you're interested in, yeah, that's uh, mm -hmm. where you can find me. Mm -hmm. Cool. And uh, we've got Jimmy. Jimmy, what do you have going on? I've got uh, finished it up on a third uh, third part of a three part series. On uh, I started off with um, uh, why I'm not a believer and how I kind of got here, and then the next one was uh, circling the square where I uh, represent um, how uh, Frank Turk is always stating that we're stealing from uh, Christians for our right. morality. And uh, I yeah. show that Christians are actually stealing from humans to make their objective morality. And then the final one is that it's all subjective. There is no such thing as objective unless you can connect the dots otherwise. And it's all counterfeit. You're all lying. Get the fuck out. And then, uh, yeah. and then I wanted to share these two memes with you. One of them was for Robbins and the other one is uh, since we didn't get raptured yesterday. Uh, we didn't if I can share Damn my it. screen Talk dirty unless to we're in purgatory now oh, yeah, there it you could go. be it feels like purgatory well I still gotta Sometimes go pick up milk so I didn't get right is, yeah. is purgatory milk any different than regular milk <laughs> <I don't know>. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I hope so I hope it tastes Faster better is. The expiration expiration date is a day sooner. Oh, in purgatory! <laughs> the expiration date is always just three days ago. <clears throat> All right, fantastic. Uh, were, were you finished, Jimmy? Oh, you had something. Gotcha. Oh yeah, yeah uh, I wanted to show. <laughs> I just found this meme. <laughs> and That's then and then this is the one that I shared with uh for Robin's uh for Robin's uh collection. Yeah. Right. That's good. So I have yeah. lots of memes. Yeah. Lots and lots of memes. 
Well, fantastic. Thank you so much for coming here, everyone. I really do appreciate you dropping in and giving your perspectives and, hey, just, just hanging out. It was great. So um, thank you all so much. I'll probably, um, and it's interesting you mentioned, pre, uh, I think I will do something on presuppositionalism. Um, one of my um, subscribers was mentioning presuppositionalism, and I'm like, yeah, I probably should do something on that. It kind of is a non-starter, but I think I could at least have something to say on it. Um, well, in philosophy, generally, it is a non-starter. Yeah. Like, not a lot of philosophers take it seriously for good reason. But um, I want to thank all of you so much. And, and, and um, yeah, it was actually really cool just, just hanging around and chatting movies. That was awesome because apparently I'm too scary to come into my room for theists. So, you know, it's sad, but that's the way it is. I mean, But apparently it's really sure easy that. to do. Apparently it's so easy to do, but none of them seem to be able to <laughs> work up the courage. Um, Mark Nitty said he's going to do a show. Uh, Nitty's going to do a show when? What? When? Right now? Right, right, now. right now? I don't know. He said, I'm going right to do a show, Mark Reed. Now, Nitty? Or is he saying he's doing a presuppositional sort of show? Oh, I thought he was going to direct one. I'm more than happy to. Absolutely. Oh, can I get a link to this? I, I have you have you programmed it already? Have you have you done it in? Are you just scheduled it? Because if you've scheduled it, I can oh. just hand it off. That's not a problem. I would love to hand it off. I, I would love to. There we go. I'd Read love raid. to give you a. a handy. This. Read raid. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you don't have to start it. You just has to be scheduled. That's all. Um, but you know, some people schedule. Some people are really impromptu with their stuff. They just go on and. That's cool. I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. Um, but thank you all so much for joining me. Thank you to all of my subscribers. If you if you can, do like and subscribe. If, if you did enjoy it, um, it really helps out me and really helps out um, the growth of the channel. Um, do, do have a good day. And um, don't forget, as I always say, be kind to yourself. Be kind to each other. Did you... Don't tell them the end of the world's coming because it's probably not going to happen. And then you're going to look very, very foolish to everybody concerned. Oh, Bobby, but, um, cheers. Well, who knows? Who knows? Let's let's try and prevent it for as long as possible and see how we end up. How about that for an idea? You know, crazy, right? Um, but do take care, everybody, and have a fantastic day, night, morning, evening, wherever you are. Thank you. Bye-bye.